What's up, everybody? Uh, happy game day to you. More than just game day, happy opening day to all you Blue Jay fans out there. Jays and Rays getting going this afternoon. And, of course, tonight it is a big one. The Stanley Cup champion, Vegas Golden Knights are in town, and the Jets look to get back in the win column, snap this losing streak, and maybe more important than the uh, final score, get back to uh, playing their brand of hockey and ramp it up in time to be their best for the Stanley Cup playoffs. We were actually down at the morning skate today, caught up with Gary Lawless. Always nice to uh, reconnect with the lawman, so we'll uh, talk a little bit about the opponents tonight a little bit later on. We'll also have Brandon Rewicki jump on, as well as Ken Weeb. Saw Weber down there this morning, and uh, obviously we actually went and uh, listened to Rick Bonus as well after the morning skate today. So uh, Bones was peppered with questions on... A number of topics, including tonight's lineup and some of the line changes that have been problematic for the Winnipeg Jets this year. So, uh, that, well, certainly recently. So we will get to all of that. 7 o'clock puck drop tonight. And uh, do not forget, Saturday is fan appreciation night for the Winnipeg Jets season against the Ottawa Senators. Saturday night game, all-Canadian matchup. Jerseys off the backs for lucky fans in attendance. Uh, anyone with a ticket will be eligible to be selected to uh, get a jersey off the back of one of the Winnipeg Jets players on Saturday. Always one of the coolest promos they do all year. And better yet, gang, especially for those of you that um, you know are always talking about the price of concessions at uh, Canada Life Center and, frankly, all sporting events, this is the game for you to be at. 50% off everything food-wise and all non-alcoholic beverages. And, of course, uh, if you are a season ticket holder, getting in on seasons for next year, you'll have that app where you get 25% off your uh, your beers at the game. Uh, but, yeah, 50% oh. off food. We may have to try a few things that haven't been tried yet at the arena so far this season coming up on Saturday, and uh, I know I should mention this too. I was talking to Balls, our, our pal who's with game production with the Moose. They are hoping that everyone in attendance will join in with Stacey Natras and uh, sing the national anthem together. Should be a, a great moment. So um, tonight, obviously, Vegas Golden Knights, it goes without saying, this is a big one. Uh, it should be a real fun one against the Ottawa Senators for Fan Appreciation Night coming up on Saturday. Um, we're going to get Remus in here. Welcome to everybody in chat. Nice to see everyone here ready to roll. Is sort of a Friday feel to this one. And yes, it is a Friday feel. It's not Friday, but we will still do our Friday tradition and do a marble race at the end of the program. But we won't go as late as we normally do because we got to get this pod up with it being a game night. So be sure to be here around 2.30 or so. We'll start registration a little earlier so we can hopefully get the marble race in and uh, still get out around 3 o'clock so the podcast can be up at a timely uh, availability for everyone listening on the pod. Just before we bring in Reem, huge thanks to the sponsors that make our show happen every day. The great people at Princess Auto, Cool Bet Canada, Consolidated Supply, Wallace & Wallace, Manitoba Battery, Modern Man Barbershop, Canadian Club. A lot of Canadian Club, I think, is going to be consumed in downtown Winnipeg tonight. Uh, not to mention Little Brown Jug at the game as well. Um, F Apparel, Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge, the Winnipeg Jets, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, and we'll get to a why not question of the day. 
for our friends at uh, Not Auto Corp, but Waverly and McGilvery, and a uh, little Breezy Bend golf report as well as the PGA Tour is back in action at the Houston Open. Uh, Remo, good to see you this morning. Good to see Gary. Good to see all the fellas. Bones as well. And uh, oh, kind of a nice buzz around the arena tonight with the long weekend at hand and uh, the champs in town to take on the Jets. Yeah, oh man, it's great to be, get out of the house Huss, once in a while, you know, we're usually uh, stuck here doing the show. We saw Gary, so I hadn't seen him for a while, said hi, recorded a nice uh, segment with you guys. And uh, yeah, looking forward to tonight's game. There's already people in chat Huss, saying, must win tonight for Jets Vegas. <laughs> I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm there, but they do. It would make everyone feel a lot better going into the weekend for sure. Um, but no, I'm not there either. I mean, it's, listen, it, you know what it's must do right now? It's must get it together. It's must put 60 minutes together. It, it's must compete, uh, at a level against the, uh, against the Vegas Golden Knights that, that, that you know that they are going to bring. Um, I've been talking about it all week. I mean, I did not see the Nashville game because we were at the arena, but the Monday game that Vegas played against St. Louis was a, a playoff style game. I mean, it was fast. It was aggressive. Um, there wasn't a lot of room out there, um, and I expect that that's what Vegas is going to bring tonight to take on uh, to take on the Winnipeg Jets. So, would love to see the wins come, but I think most importantly, um, it is you know come out the way they did against Edmonton, maintain that throughout the game, and if you do those things, the wins will come. Um, but this is a team right now that needs to get back to um, performance, consistent performances, top to bottom in the lineup, like we saw earlier this year, Reem. And uh, as I said, there was glass half full, glass half empty uh, situation against the Oilers. Um, but a lot of the things that we were legitimately very worried about coming out of that road trip, we saw improvement on Wednesday, but there's still a lot of ways to improve. And, uh, I can't think of many better teams to measure yourselves against than uh, this team that's here tonight. Yeah, big measuring stick game, Huss, against the you know last season Stanley Cup champions. Uh, you know they could be dangerous. No one wants to face uh, Vegas in the playoffs. I think no one wants to face any other Western team in the playoffs. I've learned that it's every matchup is going to be tough. So good chance Gary. to see how you match up. Yeah, we saw Edmonton yesterday. Uh, they were strong and. I agree. I mean, I thought the game was done at 3-1. I was like, oh, what's where's the pushback going to come from? We just hadn't seen it. They, you know, the second period, they didn't have it, and you're having flashbacks to the weekend. And how, how are they going to score two quick goals? But they got pressure. Um, they simplified their game. They did get pucks on net. I mean, Ehlers just tosses it on there. Monahan gets a stick on it. They had chances. They could have even taken the lead, Huss, when Adam Lowry, a uh, big chance for him. He had two. Uh, two acts at it, but I thought Stuart Skinner was very, very solid. So how will they? How will this continue? Will they be able to build on what we've seen, or will it be? I don't know. Will, will it be? You know, will we get the second period Jets or the first or back half of the third period Hus? Because you know, I think that's been their issue so far is just finding that consistency that they were so good at in the first part of the season. That's kind of gotten away, and they're uh, trying to grab. Grab hold of that consistency right now. Yeah, and and you know, and Bone spoke with that. We'll play those coming up in a minute. I mean, really liked about forty minutes of the game, um, but got to turn that twenty they didn't like around in the middle stanza. Um, I do see some people ask, like Winnipeg Walter, is Nashville a better matchup? Uh, don't worry about Nashville because the Jets won't be playing Nashville right now. But there is the potential that Nashville could actually catch the Winnipeg Jets if, you know, the Jets don't get enough points and Nashville keeps beating everybody every single night that they play, um, which would then put the Winnipeg Jets into a wild card situation. And if you're in a wild card, I think the likelihood of being the second wild card is probably not that high. You'd probably be the first wild card, which would mean you'd be playing the team of the two division winners with less wins. So, I mean, right now, possible matchups for Winnipeg are Dallas, are Colorado. Um, I mean, I guess, they, listen, they could go on a run and still win the division. I think that's quite unlikely at this point, considering where we're at right now going through. But at that point, then you're potentially playing Nashville uh, or 
either Vegas or LA, um, or they, they could play Vancouver right now. So, I mean, it's really only Nashville and Edmonton that I think you can cross off the list as being an opponent in the first round. Um, and in all likelihood, probably not LA or Vancouver, or sorry, LA or Vegas. Um, but again, like those will be conversations we'll have in the last week because I think it's quite clear with how tightly bunched all these teams are, it will come down to the final week to truly find out who is playing who. But the Jets, for their part, cannot wait till the final week to try to um, really get going and get into playoff form. Other teams around the league have already upped their level of play, and uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be one of those games tonight, Remus. That you know, Winnipeg has the opportunity to show that they are ready to raise their level of play against a team that is doing it, despite still being out some pretty important players in Winnipeg native and Knights captain Mark Stone and the recently acquired Tomas Hurdle, who will play before the end of the regular season, but certainly not anytime soon. He's not on this road trip. Yeah, Vegas 6-3-1 and one in their last 10 most recently uh, overtime loss. And Nashville, who we know is on this incredible streak. And, you know, earlier in the season, we were wanted the Jets to finish the story from 2019 and get that division banner. They've kind of fallen off. They're five points back of Dallas here. I can bring up bring up the standings. Five points and three back of Colorado. And I, I, th- I just think every matchup in the West is going to be tough. So I'm, I don't really, there's no point of saying, oh, I want to play this team or that team. You're going to have to beat everyone. To advance, and I think every team is very strong. And you're talking about ramping up. I saw on uh, X Hus that Rick Tockett was lacing into his team for not having it. They lost last game to LA. They're trying to ramp up for the playoffs. Vancouver, they're seven two and one in the last ten, firmly in first in the Pacific. But I think their play has uh, kind of slipped a little. So all teams try again that little ramp up here. Ten games left, the ten game countdown, and you do want to be in playoff form. Heading into play, if you want to be trying well, to find your game, game one. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Jets go from tonight uh, into the fan appreciation night, you know, on Saturday mm-hmm. against the Ottawa Senators. The LA Kings, who are in Edmonton tonight, uh, here on Monday. And then the most important game of the season, the true must win, <laughs> April 4th against Calgary. <laughs> so we don't get skunked on the WST pack. Um, and then, and then I think we're going to find out a lot about this hockey team as to how ready they are for the playoffs. And that of course is a four game gauntlet through the central division starting in the afternoon on Saturday against the Minnesota wild. And the jets will have the opportunity to sweep the season series against the wild and probably officially put a stake in their season if they can win that game. Um, and then it's on to Nashville. And I'm actually going to go there to Nashville. We'll do the show from Nashville for a few days uh, that week, getting ready to uh, see whether the Jets, who knows whether this streak's going to still be going on. Um, but those will be two teams that will be ready for the playoffs um, going head to head and a bit of a preview of what's to come, uh, come game 83. Then it's off to Dallas for the stars. And then it concludes in Colorado. So, to me, that week is going to be the ultimate uh, playoff primer. And then a couple games at home, Seattle and Vancouver. Then we find out who the Winnipeg Jets will be playing and how things shape up for the Stanley Cup playoffs. But uh, quickly tonight, before we get to Bones, um, lineup changes. Cole Perfetti out. Gus Bus in. So David Gustafson will be centering the fourth line with Baron and the Metznikoff. Big Stan stays in the lineup. Nate Schmidt comes out, and Dylan Sandberg is in, and Sandberg's going to be playing the right side uh, with Stan on the left. Hellebuck back in net, and uh, the line's the same, with the exception of the swap out for Perfetti and for David Gustafson. One other thing we got a chance to see, Remus, live in person was Gabriel Velarde, and uh, Velarde did some extra drills and skating after practice today. I will say this, he looked pretty good, and uh, the hope is that we might see Gabriel Velarde later on in this homestand, which would be uh, great for the lineup to get a fully healthy lineup together, really for the first time this season, not to mention what 13 might be able to do to spark the power play, which was uh, not in fine form, to say the least, against the Oilers Wednesday night. 
Yeah, 0 for 5. On Wednesday, we saw what Gabe Velarde did. I didn't know you could run a power play uh, from beside the net, but he was certainly doing it with the number of options that he gave them, taking it to net himself, uh, shooting it, passing it to Shifley, or, you know, who is he going across to Connor? Could have gone to Monaghan. It was awesome to watch when he was in there. The Jets' record with him in has been very good, and he's definitely meant a lot to the team. Top line player. They hope that he's 100%. And what they said, they wanted him to get a full practice in. They will have a full practice tomorrow. They took the off day yesterday. I guess had to make up uh, some lost off days, some lost time. So Adam Lowry said. Uh, so maybe he will get in on Saturday. And I just want to clear up for that fan appreciation us. You can stack your season ticket holder discount with the 50% off. That's, a, that's an elite deal if you can do that. You can? Well, I'm asking you, can you? Oh, I doubt. I thought that's it. what I mean, you I, said. No, no, no. I just meant that if for beers where it's oh, yeah, not fifty percent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you still have that twenty five percent off. That, assu- um, that was, definitely adds up. Assuming that you could, you couldn't stack your yeah, no, on I, on fifty percent. They would just be giving away all the food then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe one of the burritos, one of the burgers that I haven't tried this year, yeah. or the chicken man. That hot or not chicken looks good. I saw someone with one of those. It looked good. Um, at work, just a good old jet dog. Um, but come go. hungry, come hungry and take care of, uh, take advantage of, uh, those deals, which Winnipeggers love so much on Saturday, um, for the game. Um, Reem, let's get to bones. And before we get to kind of the line change stuff, if we can, let's start with number four, uh, and number five, uh, on tonight's matchup and the challenge of the Vegas golden Knights. Here's uh, Rick bonus when asked, uh, what he sees in uh, the Vegas golden Knights will be his opponent this evening. Well, they're a little different because it's, you know, we're missing stone and that, but they're a hell of a team. They're big and they're, they're heavy, and that's how they play then. They're, all their defense are big and heavy. They keep you to the outside, uh, and it's, it's going to be a battle. It's in Eichel's back now, and they've got a hell of a hockey team over there. There's no question, and uh, they'll be taking their legitimate contenders again, obviously, regardless where they are in the standings. We don't look at that. We look at that as a great team over there. That's... Uh, that's going to be big tonight, and it's going to make it very hard for us to play against. All right, so there's bones on uh, tonight's opponent, the Vegas Golden Knights. And, uh, you know, that that comment about it, them being a big, strong team, I think goes um, definitely goes into their decisions on the lineup tonight with Gus in for Cole, Perfetti, Stanley staying in, and bringing Dylan Sandberg back in. Um, uh, but Bones also talked about what we've been talking about, and I just mentioned, I mean, the importance of ramping up the level of play, um, compete, intensity, all of those things getting ready for the playoffs and the test that a team like this poses and uh, allows the Winnipeg Jets to test themselves against. Here's Bones on that. Well, you you want to be playing your best. Like we we've got ten games here. We've got to first of all we got to get in. We're not in yet. Uh, second of all, we want to make sure that we're playing the right way and we're and we're on top of the changes and we're on top of the specialty teams. Something that we we have to really work hard on and put a lot of focus on over the next ten games, and then that the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, you, know, you start on the road. You start on the road. Uh, ideally, you start at home because you get the matchups you want and everything else. But the most important thing is to make sure that we're on top of our five on five team game on top of our specialty teams. And uh, that's, you know, again, every game now is so important. Um, so that 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 heightened that, um, energy that you're going to need to play a big big team like tonight it has to come up it's it's playoff intensity right now it, it is and uh and there's no shortcuts so you're not looking closely at the matchup who it might be then no, round one yeah. not yet we're just focusing so much on getting this team ready and get, getting in and getting it ready we we've we've even the last game like we played 40 really good minutes and we played 120 we have to eliminate that 20. Yeah, there was that comment about eliminating the 20 that was uh, far, far away from the standard that they set in the first period. Um, you know, talked about, uh, you know, the size and strength of the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, Bones uh, kind of discussed the the slam and Stan pairing. Uh, Logan <laughs> Stanley and Dylan Slamberg will be uh, playing together tonight. No, Logan's game. been fine, and he gives us that big physical presence back there that you need against a team like Vegas. And you know, he gets into a scrap, and he's done the things we need him to do. So, um, and we like him better on the left side than the right side. So we'll try Dylan here, right? 
All right, so that'll be uh, interesting to uh, watch tonight. 64 and 54 together on the pairing, and Sandberg moving over to the right side. Uh, Bones gave a quick update on uh, what's up with Gabe Velarde, who was uh, out skating in the red jersey today. We'll know better t- after tomorrow. He hasn't had a chance to have a full practice. We're, we're going to skate as a team tomorrow, we'll practice, and we'll know much better than that. But he tells me he feels good. I know the coaches are pushing him hard. He has no discomfort. So uh, every day he's getting a lot closer, but we'll have a better feel for that tomorrow after practice. All right, so better feel tomorrow after practice. I guess that means there's a potentially could play Saturday. Uh, you would hope that we'd see him. I- I'm sure he'd love to play against his old team the Los Angeles Kings, although that was the team that he was injured against in game number three of the regular season. Certainly by Calgary, I would say, next Thursday. Uh, And then for that big dress rehearsal, if you will, for the playoffs, that run through the Central Division that we just laid out earlier as well. Um, This was a question from our own Connor Rabchak. Um, He asked about Perfetti's play in his return uh, and uh, the decision taking him out tonight with Gus coming in against Vegas. He's handling it well. It's a tough situation for a young player, but, you know, as I told him, when my first year in Tampa, man, we sat cooch for over a couple of games, right? And look where he goes. So it's all part of learning to be a good pro. Uh, it's tough on him. He's handling it extraordinarily well. It's not that he's, again, we're, we've got bodies. We're trying to use bodies against certain teams, different matchups, different lineups. Uh, he's not like he's played himself out of there. He didn't. But we're trying to go with lineups that we think feel give us the best chance to win that game. And it's tough on a young player like Cole. He's never had to go through something like this. So we had a good talk this morning. Um, and it, uh, listen, I feel for him. I get it. He wants to play. They all want to play. And we, we can't keep everyone happy. We can't, it's impossible, right? It's impossible. Everyone wants to play 20 minutes. Can't be done. So we, we do the best we can. Uh, and we try to explain as much as we can and be very honest and with the conversations with the players we're very honest and upfront with Cole uh, but he's handling it well that doesn't mean he's you know he's accepting he's not so I and I get that and I love that about that you know you got to fight back a little bit but uh, did he play himself out of the lineup from his game last game no he didn't are we using a different lineup tonight because it's Vegas yeah uh, and, uh, you know, Bones continued on to just add a little bit more about, you know, the uh, what Vegas brings to the table and uh, how that sort of plays into the decision to have Gus in and a call out. Big physicality, Vegas, you mentioned the matchup. Is that why? Well, you look Vegas? at that fourth line. They they play and they play, play it a lot. And they're big and they're physical. And they're, and they're going to come at you and you got to be able to match it. That, that line against in the playoffs last year, that was, that was a dominant line for them. <clears throat> Started every game, every period. They did a lot of great things because they're big, they're heavy, and they're coming at you. Uh, and you've got, we've got to make sure we can match that as best we can. All right, good stuff from uh, from uh, Connor Rabchak down there today. And I think Connor's in chat. Nice to see him this morning. Here's one more from Bones on just uh, – uh, listen, there's been some mental blocks, if you will, lately with the uh, with the club and mental adversity, if you will. I uh, talked about helping players overcome that. Well, we deal with it right away. I mean, we're dealing with it on the bench as the game's unfolding in front of us. So they they see what we see. I mean, they're not blind. So we say, listen, they obviously returned the puck over, and then we addressed it again after the second period. And that it's the it's the period break. You get a chance to clear your head and get okay. We we saw it. He's right. So um, we got to we got to turn that around. And then we did in the in the in this in the third. But sometimes you, in the course of the game, you get out there and it's just. You just can't clear your mind to, to do those things, right? It's just the game's fast. You don't have enough time between shifts to get that all straightened out. And what I always say, if the next, if if a one line's having a tough time, I'm always telling them on the bench, next line has to get us going again. Next line has to get us going again. Get this thing turned around. Easier said than done, right? Because there's another team out there. But those are things that we're constantly addressing. The coach, you also did spend some time at the beginning talking about line changes, and I know we're into the final 10 games of the season. It's probably not something that you want to be an issue, but uh, it, it does come into some of the length of shifts that um, you know have been problematic as of late as well. But uh, just before we get to Brandon, um, let's hear from the captain, Adam Lowry. Lowry talked about the last game, the ups and downs of uh, that seesaw battle against the Edmonton Oilers, and you know trying to get his team back to playing a consistent level for a full 60. You know, I, I don't think there's any moral victories in this league, but, you know, I, I think the first period, the start, 
you know, that's kind of been plaguing us lately. I thought, you know, for the most part, you know, we really liked our jump. We liked the chances we created and, you know, to get out to one nothing lead, uh, you know, I think it's what happened after that, you know, we're not thrilled with, uh, you know, especially that second period. We looked at just puck decisions, puck management, and some decisions we were making on the ice that, you know, kind of were self-inflicted wounds. I think, you know, it's important we clean those up at this time of the year, and, you know, it's... It's a big point for us, uh, you know, on the slide. But you know, the way we were able to come back three-one, you know, we give up an early power play goal against, and you know, I, you're, you're down to, to to a great team. It's, it's tough to come back, but you know, I, I really liked our response, and you know, we had some chances to pull ahead. So um, now it's just about finding that complete game. I think, you know, in this stretch, we're, you know, that's really troubled us is we've we've had, you know one bad period that's really kind of sunk the ship so you know it's cliche as it is it's you know you need to put together three solid periods uh, to, to give yourself the best chance to win in this league all right there's the captain adam lowry we are going to continue the jets discussion and much more with brandon rewicki coming up next followed by ken weeb and our old pal gary lawless Well, spring is just about here, gang, and our friends at Consolidated Supply are ready for a very busy spring and summer and the change of the seasons. You know the gang at Consolidated Supply are the leaders in irrigation systems, artificial turf, and of course, golf carts in Manitoba is the official club car dealer with incredible new and used options for you in regards to golf carts. They've also got other amazing options for your property, including hot tubs, and incredible outdoor kitchens. And of course, they're also the leaders in small engine parts and repair. Consolidated Supply has so much waiting for you. Come on down and see them at their beautiful showroom, open to the public at 1395 Niagara Road East, or find out everything Consolidated Supply can do for you online at cte.ca. Our friends at Manitoba Battery are enjoying the beauty of their new location over on Dovercourt Road. It is officially open, and Donnie and his staff welcome you down at the original location at 1026 Logan, but at the new spot at 452 Dovercourt Drive. And as part of the grand opening celebrations, any battery that's normally $60 or more will save you an extra $10 if you pick it up in store. But, of course, you know Manitoba Battery is your local option with the best prices on batteries of all makes, models, shapes, sizes, whatever you need, beating the pants off the big box stores. And, of course, they will deliver to you for free any battery purchase inside the perimeter of Winnipeg over 60 bucks. It's just that easy. So head on over to ManitobaBattery.com or pop by and visit the fellas at the new location 452 Dovercourt Drive, and of course, the original spot at 1026 Logan Avenue. Guys, if you need to uh, get a fresh new look as we head into spring, you know where to do that. Get on over to one of the eight Modern Man Barber Shops, conveniently located throughout the city of Winnipeg, including their two newest standalone locations on Pemina Highway or on Plessy Road. Modern Man Barbershops offer a variety of grooming services, including haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. The easiest way to make an appointment and book your look is at modernmanbarber.com. Make sure to give them a follow on Instagram as well, at Modern Man Barbershops. And we also have a huge thank you to the great people at Canadian Club for their continued support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. And of course... The Winnipeg Blue Bombers is the official spirit of the blue and gold. We'll be counting down the days till we're enjoying CC's at the Rum Hut and the Jim Beam Social House and CC's and Ginger's at the stands at Princess Auto Stadium. But while we wait for football to return, you can always get the great taste of Canadian Club and all their amazing products at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. Pop by today and check out the Canadian Club display. And remember... Always enjoy responsibly. All righty. Uh, we, uh, as I mentioned, Gary's coming up a little bit later on. Ken as well. Right now, though, let's uh, get Brandon Rewicki in here. You know him as the host of Skates and Plates and a regular contributor here on WST. Rewicki, what is up, buddy? How are you? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of a lot of things right now, but... 
happy to be back with you guys. I, I man, I, hopefully there's no uh, there's no interruptions or anything like that. I got the fine boys from Lake uh, Lake Country Construction helping me out here, so we're uh, they're, they're making the place look pretty, much prettier than I could ever imagine. So I guess it uh, it goes without saying that there's plenty. The the work is not over now that you've finished moving. Uh, it's just starting in a lot of ways. Yeah, well, and, and, and the next step is to see if they can help me with like. Getting the wrinkles out, getting the bags out from under my eyes. So, one project ends, another begins. Yeah, good luck on that one. Um, <laughs> you know what? There's uh, speaking of a project. There's quite a project right now to get the Jets back to where they were. That uh, made them one of the top teams in the National Hockey League. We saw a bottoming out on the road, a better performance, although no result against the Capitals, and then. Wednesday night against Edmonton, which I think in a lot of ways is sort of glass half full, glass half empty. I mean, what did you make of the Jets' performance? The start, ugly second, great comeback, and then obviously losing in overtime and uh, leading into tonight's game against Vegas. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a microcosm of where they're at right now. And I, I don't know. I, I, I've got a theory, Hus, and I don't know if it's right or wrong or if it's just, you know, completely out there, but... I, and that game kind of reminded me of it too a little bit is that I, I almost wonder slash worry if there's not an, an unearned arrogance about this team. You know what I mean? Where you see this sometimes with maybe the lightning a few years ago, maybe the golden Knights are doing this to a degree this year where it's the, the thought of, you know, we're the best and we're going to figure this thing out. You know, like it's it's not always going to be there, but when it comes down to it, we're going to figure things out. And it it just I don't know. It, 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 there's there's pockets of the game that you see the Jets commit to what they did for the first 45, 50 games this year, right? And and you see an elevated sense of urgency and commitment to detail and focus and structure and all that. And when they do that, <laughs> they're a damn good team, but they just don't do it enough. And it's funny because in, in, in a way they kind of get rewarded for it because what do they do in the third period when all hope looks lost? They turn it on for a minute 20 and we got ourselves a tie game and they're heading to OT against a really good Oilers squad. I, I, I kind of worry now. My I mean, realistically with where things are, Hus, it looks like the Jets are probably destined for that three seed in the Central Division. So really the main goal in the next 10-11 games is just can you get your game right by the time the playoffs get underway and puck drops for game one? I just hope the Jets realize this isn't a we can cakewalk into the postseason and we'll flip the switch in game one. Because if they do that, it's going to be another early exit. But if they can find a way to start that now and get it ramped up in these next 10 games, then I think things might end up being okay. But my concern is that there's just there, there there's this almost sense of inevitability with the team that we're going to figure it out, and it's like you don't you haven't earned that. Like it's that's not a part of your DNA. And there's teams that are more skilled and have a longer track record of success than you do that don't have that envelop their team at, at, at crucial points of the season and in games as well. Yeah, I mean, listen, we'd need a, a sports psychologist to maybe go through what goes in between the ears of a team overall and individual players. All I can tell you is that that blip and for a couple of games last week was as ugly uh, of a stretch as we've seen in a long time. And I think there were big questions as to how this team would react to it. Um, you know what you're expecting to see, a much better performance. And... Maybe the fact that it didn't just get turned around over, you know, in a game or two is in some ways maybe a good thing. I mean, I think it's certainly from a coach's standpoint, it needs, you know, full 100% commitment to everything that made them successful before for multiple games to get back to where that they have been. And, you know, as I said, I, I really liked the way they played for a good 40 against Washington, especially that second period, they were dominant. They couldn't beat Charlie Lindgren though. Um, and that is going to happen. And then unfortunately, special teams has been a big topic lately. I mean, how many times have they killed out one fifty of a two minute penalty and then had one go in late? And obviously they were chasing the game after that. I mean, the Edmonton game, 
I, like a lot of people, felt that, you know, a four-minute penalty to Nikolai Ehlers, they scored 30 seconds in, had another two minutes after that, you're thinking, okay, this one is lost. So you have to be able to take some real legitimate positives from the way that they did battle back. And, you know, I thought carried the play for the majority of the third period. But, man, you know, you got a gift phantom call with two minutes left in a game like that. And, I mean, we talked a lot about the power play yesterday because if you're getting five chances against a team like Edmonton, you know that they're going to get theirs. You have to make that happen, and that wasn't there. So there's certainly work to be done on special teams as well. To me, though, it's something that Rick Bonus said going into that game that I think is the most important is that if this team doesn't outwork the other team or at least work, you know, match the level of compete and intensity of their opponents, it's not going to happen. And, and I would argue too, and I'm sure you would agree, like this team can be playing their absolute best. Come playoff time, there's absolutely no guarantees. I mean, just because the Jets are playing at a high level, which they're certainly capable of, that doesn't guarantee you're beating teams like Dallas or Colorado, which most likely will be the first-round opponent. So there's a lot of things that, that need to happen, but it's a non-starter if you don't bring your best in the Central Division come Stanley Cup playoff time. It's going to be a short, short series if that doesn't happen, and that to me seemingly is the goal right now. Um, and I thought a lot of guys were there, but they all weren't there on Wednesday, and uh, if everyone's not at that point together playing for each other at a full hundred percent it's uh it ain't happening yeah there, there's non-negotiables when it comes to being a successful hockey team and the jets are trying to bargain their way out of doing some of them right now and and that's how you that's how you have a game like the islanders one where you're you're skated off the ice to a team that's not really sniffing the playoffs right now the devils skate all over you the night before that right like it did it, 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 the funny thing too is there's almost this you know and I don't even know what the right word is, but expectation that, you know, we elevate our level come playoff time, we're going to be okay. Well, guess what? Dallas has a different level. Colorado ha- probably has two or three different levels. Like, your elevated level just might not be good enough. Like, there there needs to be an untapped reserve that this club finds to figure things out. And, you know, may- maybe it's the Tortorella effect in me, Hus, that, you know, watching what he's done with the Flyers and the standards that's been set over there where basically everyone is held accountable, and that includes the freaking captain, potentially spending some time up in the press box. It's it's wild to me that, you know, we go into this stretch of hockey where the Jets are playing arguably their worst of the season, you know, going into that the, the game against the Capitals, and the response has been nothing. Same lineup combos, essentially. Same personnel, same ice time allotment. Nothing really changes. And it's it's just wild to me, the, the, the stubbornness that we continue to see here. Like, you, you do wonder what ultimately it's going to take here. Because, I mean, this is basically two years, two full years of bones here. And I think the, the message has been pretty clear, right? And if you're not getting it now, when are you ever going to get it? And I'm... I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty stunned, Hus, that we haven't seen different personnel decisions being made here to try to hold this team a little more accountable when their play goes sideways, especially when you look, never mind the Flyers, but a number of other teams who aren't afraid to to crack the whip to try to send a message that we gotta we, we gotta pick it up big time here. Well, and, and listen, I agree. We spent quite a bit of time talking about that, and I mean, I think the guys that. And listen, I mean, Shifley's had a, a major bounce back season, um, but he hasn't been at the level that he was, I'd say, for the first 50 games often enough over the course of the past month. Um, and uh, BFF, KFC, um, in particular, has looked off at times as of late. And, you know, I know we spent some time talking about, you know, what led to that overtime goal. I don't want to spend too much time on the OT goal because it's insignificant when you're talking playoffs about three on three. What is significant though, is the will to get back in and make up for a mistake and, you know, get back in. We always say the top, the guy, the fastest guy on the ice is the guy that just made the mistake or gave the puck away. Like, that wasn't the case, and I think that, you know, definitely raised some questions, and I said yesterday, it's going to be a tough video session, I think, for 81. Like, the one thing I would say, and we've talked about it before, um, 
a flip of Ehlers and Connor, a simple flip like that, I think would be a message sender to Kyle Connor. Um, and I think it could also produce some benefits, um, but it doesn't look like that is happening. But I got a lot of time for Ehlers. I mean, listen, I know we took that bad penalty. But what did was, he do, Huz? He came out and turned the game around by hitting afterwards and basically started you know. that. He, he didn't, Listen, he was the catalyst for the turnaround in the play. That's the sort of answer you want. And it's a great example for other players like 81 to maybe look at and try and emulate a little bit more. Um, you know, that sort of passion in the game is important and it's been lacking at times. And I get it, 82 games, you're not getting that every single game through the regular season, but it better be there at the end of the regular season when they open it up. And uh, might be a good time to kind of show a bit more of that by some guys near the top of the lineup. Yeah, that, 1,000%. And, and you you knew once you saw, you know, back-to-back hits in three seconds from Ehlers that he was he was going to make some, like, the puck was going in, right? Like, you just, you could just feel it. And I would like to see more of that from, from Nick personally, like before we get to other members of the team. Yeah. Because, you know, not not that he's been terrible, but you, you see what happens when it gets amped up a little bit. Um, and, and so that was, you're right. I mean, terrible penalty, selfish penalty after a missed call by the referees just before that. But that's how you make up for it is you bust your ass and you go out and make something happen. And we're, we're, we're not seeing that as much with, with certain guys. And, to, I mean, if we're just going to be frank here, Huss, Kyle Connor's 27 years old. I, I don't get why the baby gloves treatment is still happening right now. Like, this isn't a 20-year-old kid trying to figure things out. Like, there, there doesn't... I, I just don't understand. And it, I don't even want to do the whole Ehlers, Connor, who goes where debate, that sort of thing. If you're not going to play defense, you don't get 20 minutes a night. End of story. There is, there's no debate. There is no ulterior motive here. We have to play a certain way. If you don't want to do it, here's 15 minutes a night. Show me why you need 20. That, 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 I mean, that I think would go a long way in helping to solve a lot of this team's issues, to be quite honest, because... Right now, the only line that's really going five on five is Adam Lowry's line. And it has been for, for quite some time. So there needs to be something figured out. I wouldn't just say the top line, but the top six as a whole. And I just don't think we need to tiptoe around the fact anymore. I mean, I'm sorry. There's 10 games to go. You think you're a cup contender. You give away a first round pick, a second round pick, a few other assets here. Like this, it's go time. We gotta, we gotta get this thing sorted out right away. And so you know, it doesn't have to be you get a healthy scratch, you get a healthy scratch, you get a healthy. But we have a few things that we need to get in place. And if the guy's getting 19, 20 minutes a night, don't want to play that way, that's fine. Enjoy the third line. Enjoy the third pair. Well, the, and when you're ready, we can come back and, and go at it. The thing about it is, is it's not really fine because this team is going absolutely nowhere if they're not getting high-level performance from those guys. They're too important to the team. They're too talented. And in particular, in Kyle Connor's case, he's relied on far too much for goal scoring. And like I'm with you. You could throw Adam Lowry's out there line a little bit more. And the fourth line's been working hard and doing some good things. You can throw there out there. You're not getting the same results than you are from getting your top players playing at their top level. I, and I would argue you are, though, because right now, Kyle Connor's barely breaking even. Five on five. Well, that's so, why they're not winning. I guess exactly. my point is you have to get him to that level. Like, yeah, there's no one yeah, else exactly. that's going to be able to do it. I yeah. So we're we're on the same we're on the same wavelength there. It's how do you go about that? And 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 to me, it's I, I think it is sending the message via ice time that we you know we just we can't play like this. We, we we cannot have success. Look at what the other top lines are doing across the league on cup contending teams. I'll tell you what, it's not zero or minus one. It's plus. 15 it's plus 20 it's you know so on and so on so the Jets best chances of success going deep is to have Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers heavily outscoring their opposition and playing big minutes but until you're outscoring them we can't give you that right so I I, I to me it's it's more so that we just we, we can't reward you with 20 21 minutes a night if defensive effort is going to be a d minus like, you, you just need more out of them. And maybe the easiest way to get that through is that, guess what? Increased defensive effort usually leads to more goals and points. And if that's what you're after, that's an easy way to go out yeah. there and get it. 
Um, we don't we don't need you know Mark Stone and Yeri Letton in 2.0 out there on the wings for the Jets, but you need you need average defending, right? You need a little bit more. And guess what? If they're doing it, the trickle down effect happens down the rest of the roster because if, if the top dogs are bringing it. If you're a little bit lower down the pecking order, you have no choice but to elevate that from your side as well. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm curious what the breaking point is going to be for that to happen, Hus, because like the Jets could play pretty damn good and lose to Vegas tonight. And oh, yeah. you know, it's it's not even a real reflection on the team's talent level and like the macro outlook and everything like that. But you're running out of time. Like there's there's not much game time left here to get this thing sorted out quick. This game in particular, I think, is a real pre-playoff litmus test, if we want to go to one of our favorite terms on WST. Um, And there's going to be none bigger than those four games through the Central Division, Minnesota, Nashville, Dallas, Colorado, all on the road. Um, All teams, with the exception of Minnesota, they're going to be playing in the playoffs. And all teams right now, that are playing at a very high level. I mean, heck, Nashville, I mean, this is a full-fledged Hamburglar run, run run that they're on right now. And it's not just because of the goaltender that's letting in one in one in a night. Um, so all of that will come together. And listen, it would be great to get Gabriel Velarde back. We were down at the rink this morning. He actually looked really good. I mean, was doing a bunch of drills afterwards, was doing a bunch of skating. Um, and that has to be a big bonus to the power play because Brandon, um, like I still believe, like I thought that's that the PK was much better for the better part of the second half of the season. They have fallen off a little bit lately. Um, but I mean, that is, I mean, look, there's some bounces that go into that. I mean, I, I think the PK is set up at least, you know, led by I and Lowry to keep their heads above water, but you have to be able to get something on the power play as well. And the power play, they are so lucky that that didn't completely nuke the game on Wednesday um, because it was dreadful at times. Um, Filardi's going to come back. That'll be great. But what are you seeing from that power play? What do they need to do more? Because it wasn't too long ago. They were the hottest power play in the league, second overall since Monaghan became a Winnipeg Jet. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to look. I know it's not always that simple, right? But to look at the slump of the power play coinciding with Velarde missing time, right? Like, I mean, he's he's he might be as integral as Monahan is because yes, Monahan is the bumper sets everything up, but to have that, I don't know if you want to call it a, a secondary or a tertiary threat, but to have Velarde capable of scoring high level goals right in and around the crease there. It, it just completely adds a new dimension to your power play. So is it as easy as saying Velarde back, power play good? I think so. I, I think it might be, right? And then, you know, it, it's tough too for a new guy to come in, Tyler Toffoli. You know, you're trying to get acclimated to a new system. You, you don't always have the same line mates five on five. And now all of a sudden you're being thrown into the mix on a power play unit that you haven't really played on yet. And you're, and you're trying, you're just trying to get your bearings straight understand maybe why he's not super comfortable on on the five-man unit there so i i I think that's probably the biggest issue and one that's going to solve itself pretty quickly the the surprising thing though Hus, is that it feels it doesn't really feel like we're getting a lot of high quality hal connor looks on his side of the ice oh not at all and I, i i haven't done a deep dive into what the power play has looked like over the past little bit so i don't hard to say just off the cuff you know watching it what the exact issue is but i do think maybe if the puck movement is a little sharper and a little quicker to get kyle connor just that extra half second of time and space to work with there you know having his 40 maybe 50 goal capability there and getting him some looks that that probably makes things a little bit easier too right and then you can create traffic off the chaos of a of a kyle connor shot well it's i mean yeah velarde won but getting connor a little more a little more open looks, I think, goes a long way, too. Well, and, and, and you know what? I mean, listen, I don't want this to turn into just us, uh, you know, ragging on Connor, but I think a lot of that is on him, too. I mean, he has had the puck, you know, a number of times and just hasn't made quick plays, um, hasn't handled the puck at the level that we're so used to him doing it. I mean, if there's one thing that that guy has, 24-7, 365, is great hands, 
And it's been weird at some of the giveaways and turnovers that had happened off of his stick. Um, and who knows, maybe it's just a matter of getting something good happening and getting a little bit more confidence going forward because he has been struggling at times and it, it's been in a number of different areas. The one place that you wouldn't think would be too problematic is the power play, and yet that sort of has been uh, as well. I certainly would love them to have a focus on shooting the puck earlier in the power play. I mean, and, and getting it in, whether it's from Josh Morrissey, whether it's Shifley, whether it's in the middle, make a point of putting that puck on net earlier because, I mean, especially on the four-minute power play, I mean, they had a tough time even setting up in the zone, to be uh, to be honest. But even on the power play, sometimes those uglier or greasy goals are ones, and you, you have the extra man, take advantage of the advantage of rebounds and whatnot, get in there, and I certainly would uh, would love to do that. Um, listen, Brandon, before we uh, before we go, um, and again, next week and the week after, we'll have plenty of time to talk about all of the uh, latest with the Winnipeg Jets and what's happening there. I want to ask you about something in Philly quickly. I'm not sure if you saw this this morning, but um, Elliot Friedman tweeting this out that uh, and goaltending has been such a big story with Philly. And of course, we know about the, the precarious future, to say the least, of Carter Hart. This Fedotov goaltender that has yeah. been uh, apparently I heard described as somewhat basically uh, held hostage by Russia in the KHL. Moscow terminated his contract today. And Friedman reporting that's believed he's en route to beginning his career for the Flyers. This is a guy that there's been a lot of talk about. He's 27, very good numbers. I mean, for that team to get a player like that coming in at this time, I mean, never mind about this season, just moving forward would be huge. But give us a bit of a background on this guy, what has been happening, why he's been there, and why this is such an interesting development for people that watch the league. It's a crazy story because two years ago, he was seen as not not necessarily battling Carter Hart for the number one spot, but he was a guy that, you know, went to the Olympics, lit it up there. KHL numbers were sparkling. He's a huge goalie. He's like 6'6 six, six or 6'. Like he's, he's a big, big dude. And they had big time plans for him to play really in more of a platoon role with Carter Hart. Like not – at 15, 20 games a year, but probably 30, a little bit higher than that. And when I say that Russia sent him to Siberia as punishment for trying the NHL route, I am not exaggerating. They sent him to a military outpost in Siberia for quote unquote army training. And he didn't play hockey for a year. Like he was just, they just sent him basically to the Arctic and said, yeah, I don't think so. And so the Flyers just ended up losing out on having somebody like that as a part of their organization. His, his contract actually ran up with the Flyers. So the, the Flyers still technically hold his rights. So they are able to sign him now that he's become a, I guess, not even a pending free agent. He's just a free agent right now. But, I mean, he's really one of the only guys, Hus, that was a Russian player, played in Russia, that was barred from coming over here. Like, it's been quite some time since that happened. And... I, I don't know how game sharp he is. I know he's played in the KHL this year, uh, but I'll tell you what, the, the backup goaltending situation right now in Philly is as bad as it gets. And if they end up missing out on the playoffs, that's what is going to cost them a playoff spot. So we'll see what happens. It's it's funny too, because Fedotov's now coming over, um, but the real exciting goalie is uh, this Kolosov kid that they drafted a few years back. A lot of people think he's, Urson's been great, but a lot of people think he's the the star. Like this is, He's the next one. So they both might be coming in at the same time here. And I would I would absolutely not rule out one of these two coming in and getting a game or two down the stretch because the Flyers are getting like 800 goaltending from their backups. And they've got a kid in Urson who's just never had this kind of a workload before. And he started to crumble under the pressure. So I, I guess it's bad that the Flyers are back to being the Flyers. Huh? The goaltending situation is unlike any other in the NHL. So, so maybe it's just a sign of a return to relevance again. Yeah, uh, no doubt about it. Well, listen, I was fascinated to hear that news today. And, uh, you know, that will be something I think we'll be paying close attention to. And who knows? If they can finish the job and get into the playoffs. Maybe <laughs> we'll be a guy getting one of his first starts in a Stanley Cup playoff game. Who knows? Uh, listen, have a great Easter weekend, man. Enjoy the game tonight. Of course, the game on Saturday. And uh, we'll do it again next week. 
Yeah, sounds good. Enjoy your weekend, too. We'll talk to you guys soon. Good stuff. There is Brandon Rowicki. Great to have be with us on the program. Hey, I want to give a big thanks to uh, our friends at Princess Auto, proudly founded and headquartered right here in the city of Winnipeg, Manitoba, and uh, going coast to coast and taking care of Manitobans and Canadians with the best deals and the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list, which heading into spring, I'm sure, is growing. Princess Auto has got you covered. Uh, get on down to one of two Winnipeg locations, Panit Road or Portage Avenue West, and check it all out there for yourself, or you can shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. And, of course, Princess Auto Stadium. Looking forward to welcoming you Bomber fans to cheer on the blue and gold this year. And some other exciting things. I'll give you a little tease for you coming to the stadium coming up for this summer as well. Um, Got to shout out our friends at Wallace and Wallace. You know, I was speaking with the Wallace and Wallace gang. Um, you know, they're the fencing and overhead door specialists in town since 1946. This is a time where things are really ramping up for the residential fencing part of the business. And uh, now, gang, is the time to uh, get ready. They are booking and expected to be starting installations for residential fencing by the end of April. If you book before April 15th, they can guarantee a May installation date so you can enjoy the entire summer on your side of a brand new fence. Don't wait and end up at the back of the line for a new fence. Give Wallace and Wallace a call today. They are the standard in the fencing industry. And as I mentioned, for over seven decades here in Winnipeg, you can give Wallace and Wallace a call today at 204-452-2700 to arrange a time to uh, get that estimate and get the work order in and get that fence not only ordered, booked, but delivered and built in time for the end of May. Um, hey, speaking of spring, guys, how's the closet looking? You need to uh, upgrade your menswear, getting ready for wedding season and more? Well, you know where to go. F Apparel down at 190 Smith Street. Uh, guys, they've got custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, made to fit and look great, along with chinos, golf pants, Custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, not to mention an incredible selection of menswear accessories. If you are getting married or in a wedding party coming up, talk to them about a 15% discount for wedding parties, as well as a great offer for upcoming high school grads. Again, F Apparel, 190 Smith Street. Find out more and make an appointment at F, that's E-P-H, Apparel. Dot com And uh, man, cannot wait. Speaking of spring and summer, getting ready for fishing season. Our friends at Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge are ready for the upcoming year. As the snow and ice melts, they'll be getting back out there. But they are putting the finishing touches on the Aikens team for this year. And do have a couple openings for young fishing enthusiasts to be on the water in paradise as a guide for this year. If you know of that person or are one of those people that would be loving to spend the days in the boat out at Aikens Lake with guests all summer long, fire a resume or get in touch at AikensLake.com. You can also hit them up on all of their socials and be part of the Aikens team for the upcoming year. And in addition, uh, they're booking well into July and August right now, but there is a small availability for Father's Day weekend. Uh, in June. So uh, it's always a great time of year to be on the water and be fishing. If uh, that might work for you, talk to Aikens Lake about uh, getting in on maybe a father-son trip, a great family trip for Father's Day weekend coming up at Aikens Lake. Again, that's all available at AikensLake.com. All right, Remo, we've got Ken Weeb coming up in a few minutes, and then uh, we will have the return of Gary Lawless to the program as well in a marble race before we're all done. Yeah, so Ken is on his way home. He asked me to call him on the phone. I'm just call him right now. Oh, my God. Is he going major? I thought Gary was going to be the diva behavior that we had to deal with today. But, no, it's Ken. He says, hey there. He's just texting me right now. I won't be home for 10 to 12 minutes, so we better go by phone instead. 
wow okay he's gonna get it let's uh, and let's... then i was gonna say we could play gary first because we recorded that but he, ken has a heart out yeah let's just get him on the phone he's okay. gonna get the business from us and then we'll talk <laughs> about we'll talk about the winnipeg jets this is an un unbelievable very very unprofessional from a guy that is normally as professional as as it comes um he requested today i think or no, yeah, he did. Because he said did. he could have gone either day, so that's okay. Well, <laughs> okay, we'll get Ken on right now. Let's take a look at what's happening in uh, in chat. Yeah, lots of talk about uh, Logan Stanley being in the uh, being in the net again. Um, you know what? Well, while we'll do this, let me fire up the uh, why not question of the day uh, for uh, for not Autocorp. Uh, as far as the lineup goes, um, are you pro or con keeping Stanley in for a game against the Vegas Golden Knights? And having David Gustafson in for the Vegas Golden Knights, are you uh, are you on side with Rick Bo Rick Bonus and his thoughts on the lineup tonight? Let us know in uh, let us know in the chat. Is this uh, possibly the biggest diva in Winnipeg media? Ken Weeb, you're live on Winnipeg Sports <laughs> Talk. How are you? I you know what I really thought that Gary was going to be the diva today, but uh, <laughs> now we're getting the we're getting the hard out at this time. I can't be there. Call oh, me on the my phone. Goodness, well, thank goodness and goodness. Uh, some of us welcome. For us, I'm very, very much apologetic. Uh, great to see our good friends from the Vegas media contingent. Uh, it uh, had to get the newsletter pumped out here. Now trying to hustle home. Uh, we got opening day. Jay's game at three. Got to get to the rink. It's. Uh, I apologize for not having a better backdrop. Let's go with that. That's okay. That's okay. We've got a picture from, uh, I don't know, this is probably six or seven years ago. Um, by the way, a belated oh, happy good. birthday Perfect. as well, speaking of that. Um, Thank you, Hus. So Thank let's you. Get, I feel, like, let's feel young. Get, feeling young. <laughs> let's get to it. Um, where I was just kind of putting this out to uh, out to the chat. Um, what do you think? Um, kind of a couple. Well, uh, listen, I. I've got, we've talked a lot about Logan Stanley on this program for the last few years. I'll be honest. I think in the games that he has been given the opportunity to play over the last couple of months, he's acquitted himself very well. Um, I don't think that Nate Schmidt probably deserves to be out of the lineup. I understand they wanted to get Dylan Sandberg back in uh, and David Gustafson in for Cole Perfetti. It seems like size seems to be very much on the mind of Rick bonus. How do you see it uh, tonight? And what do you think about the changes? Yeah, it definitely seems to be a factor for sure. Uh, I would say that uh, I'm not expecting uh, line lineup changes to be the difference in the game tonight. Um, I would be I'm with you. I mean, Dylan Sandberg needs to get in the lineup. Uh, he's going to be in the Jets game one lineup. Uh, I expect Nate Schmidt to be in there also. But, I mean, I understand that uh, one thing with having players at your disposal that fill different roles, uh, when you play a team, you are going to try to match up against them. So do, does it make sense to me that Gustafson is going in in a – a big heavy game, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I thought that Cole showed some nice confidence with the puck uh, at even strength and on the power play, even in the second unit's limited minutes the other night. Uh, and I thought that Logan Stanley, if you're asking someone to be a be a physical player and occasionally drop the mitts, I would say that uh, Logan Stanley acquitted himself very well. Uh, you know, I said the most important thing for Stanley, and I actually talked with him about it today, Hus. He didn't ask Corey Perry if he wanted to go. He told them they were going, and uh, that assertiveness is something that he needs to have in his game with regularity when he wants to become an NHL defenseman, and he, we know he wants that to be the case. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's we're still stuck in the 17 games in 31 days, so I understand there's still going to be a little bit of in and out here, Huss, but come Monday for that game against L.A., I think we're going to see the game one lineup more often than not, but I think it's a reminder that the matchup game is going to be a, a prevalent thing for this team, especially once Gabriel Velarde gets back. And that, to me, has, as long as he gets through Friday's practice, I won't be surprised if he's in the lineup on Monday against the LA Kings. Now, that's not a certainty, but that would be my expectation based on what Rick was saying today. And by watching him, I mean, you're at the skate today, He's moving around pretty well. So as long as his conditioning can get up in a hurry, Gabriel Velarde will be back in the lineup. If not Monday, I would expect maybe potentially before the road trip. And if not on Thursday, I would expect him on the road trip to be a player. And, unless, too, there could be a setback. But 
the way he's feeling today, if that's the way he feels after Friday's practice, I expect we're going to see Gabriel Velarde. And then folks are going to get what they want in terms of maybe uh, shaking up the top six a little bit here as well. Well, he's speaking of the top six. I mean, we've spent a, quite a bit of time over the last couple of days talking about the game on Wednesday. Um, what, what's up with Kyle Connor right now in your mind? Where's he at? Uh, he's not at the peak performing uh, position. Um, alliteration uh, not intended, but um, yeah, I mean, I think Kyle Connor had eight shots and nine shot attempts against the Washington Capitals. I thought it was the most dangerous he had looked in quite some time. And um, the other night, I, he wasn't particularly dangerous, and he made a casual play with the puck at a time that he can't be casual. So, um, you know, he needs to be better. Let's just put it that way. I mean, between the two, between Shifley and Connor, neither one of them made the play particularly well in the game-winning goal. I mean, that's going to happen on three-on-three at times. Um, uh, it's just the teams, uh, the teams the Jets are playing, their best players have elevated. I mean, Mark's barely a week removed from being the best player on the ice, but he hasn't been the best player on the ice in any of the games since. So uh, I would say both of them need to, to elevate their game. And, and Alex Iafalo, is he going to be a first-line player when Velarde's there? No, but I mean, Alex Iafalo also has 25 points in 31 games against Vegas in his career, most of them coming when he was with the LA Kings. So I understand lots of folks want to see it. You know, this is a reminder that when Gabriel Velarde is ready, the Jets want Velarde with Connor and Shifley. And, you know, Nikolai Ehlers, he got a nice assist the other day, but he wasn't at his best for the majority of the game either. So I don't think it's as simple as just putting Ehlers with Shifley and expecting all the Jets' problems to be solved. Uh, does that mean that I don't see a, a, t- a chance for them to play together? No, but I don't think it's as simple as saying, uh, you know, coaching staff doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, the numbers say put them together and it'll all be solved. I, I just don't, if that were the case, they would be doing it, I think. So uh, I, I think that the Jets want John Monahan and Nikolai Ehlers to flourish together. They need to get Tyler Toffoli going. He's only had one assist in the last five games. So to me, uh, I think there still are moving parts around the top six, but I mean, the runway is, is running out. So Al Connor needs to elevate his game. Mark Schleifen needs to elevate his game. Nikolai Ehlers needs to elevate his game. As Sean Monahan, they played better the other night. Toffoli needs more. The Jets need more from everybody. Huh? It's, it's pretty much, that's what it boils down to, to me. And again, if they want to shuffle some pieces around fine, but I just think that the Jets need to be locking into uh, like, Two to three periods was progress, but it's not good enough when you're playing teams like Edmonton, like Vegas. And if the Jets don't get back to 60-minute efforts, us, they're soon going to be having, if they're not already feeling the breath on their neck from the Nashville Predators, you know, they're probably going to be feeling it pretty soon. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about that. And I think that, you know, as much as where, like where the team finishes in the Central Division and who they're playing to me, is secondary right now to get everybody, you know, working and competing at a level. I mean, Rick Bonus said going into that game, and I mean, it was sort of veiled. He didn't say about any people in particular that you know we need to we need to work harder or outwork other teams. And and even if you know the other teams are coming at full bore and working their asses off, that team needs to do that too. And it's funny you bring up Ehlers because I'm with you. I mean, neither of those guys were particularly good for a good portion of the game, especially in the second <laughs> period. And, you know, Ehlers was caught behind the play, took a bad penalty that led to a power play goal. But when he came out of the penalty box, he came out with a level of passion and anger that we haven't seen in a while. He made a couple of hits. He was the catalyst in establishing play in the end that quickly turned into the goal that got them on the board. And then a couple of minutes yep. later, ended up playing that in and. You know what? Listen, I have a lot of time for that. And I think that's exactly what, Winnip- what Winnipeg wants from their players. And I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, you know, especially when you look at you know that that goal after the Kyle Connor Kyle turnover, it just wasn't there. And I'm not sure they can get a guy to ramp up their level of emotional engagement. But I would say he would be at the top of the list, and probably who Rick Bonus was talking about, amongst others when he uh, was talking going into the Edmonton game about that level of work ethic that, you know, to be honest, wasn't there enough on that road trip. Yeah, I mean, 
For sure. I mean, us. I mean, do I want to see Ehlers is the guy who flourishes in open ice. So, again, I know you didn't ask me, but would I have liked to see Ehlers on the ice in the overtime against the Oilers? For sure. Um, do I understand why Lowry and Appleton started against Connor McDavid? Yes. At even strength, they kept him off the board. Like, McDavid's goal came against the Shifley line, and his power play assist came not at 5-on-5, five five, right? So... I mean, everyone needs to be going now, Huss. I mean, this, to me, it's not as simple as just pointing. I mean, I understand, you know, things are going around the Internet. Oh, well, terrible back check. It wasn't good enough. But, I mean, the game is, is long. There's lots of people that make mistakes within the game. Does it get magnified when it happens in that game? Yes. But, I mean, that, that turnover happens 180 feet away from where the goal is scored. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely Kyle O'Connor has to take a big piece of that because he turned the puck over in the offensive zone. I mean, Mark Shifley didn't play it casually, but he went for the poke check and Zach Hyman got past him, right? I mean, if he makes the poke check, they got a two-on-one goal in the other way, but he didn't, and he didn't get the body of Hyman, and Hyman scores. So, I mean, we're always trying to break down the game as best we can, but this is all, it wasn't just one player having a bad second period. The entire team had a bad second period. Right? They were, you know, outshot dramatically and, and turned the puck over almost ad nauseum. So, I mean, they just need to get back to playing the way that they have been when they were successful. They know what it looks like, but right now their or self-inflicted wounds are compounding us. It's not just one that ends up in the back of the net. It seems like there are multiple things that are happening, and then when they happen, the Jets can't get the ship kind of sorted back out. So it's become a bit problematic on those fronts and then also compounded by poor special teams, right? Because... Um, um, oh. that's also been a big play. problem, right? Okay. Power play one for 16 and the penalty kill operating at 65% in those six games, right? So, I mean, it's just crazy how things kind of, the Jets were stable for so long, Huss, right? I mean, and yeah, I mean, some, some people were saying that that stretch of 34 consecutive games of three or fewer, oh, that didn't matter. That was just a, you know, one of these made up stats. Well, it actually, it's not because they haven't been able to find that level of consistency since that time, right? So, and, and the more impressive thing during that stretch was the 14 in a row of two or fewer. And, and right now the Jets aren't playing that stingy style, which was also related to how they manage the puck, how their line, cha- like their line changes have been loose, like not just allowing goals, but like taking too many men on the ice penalties, right? So there are just too many parts of the Jets game that have like there's just been a little bit of subtle erosion hus but that erosion has now kind of happened for 2 months and all of a sudden the erosion you're looking back at the at the shore and the place that used to be the safe area for the jets has now kind of been flooded with water and they're trying to you know you, you could get the memes going of people grabbing buckets and trying to toss the water back out of the boat and onto the into the sea to sort of plug some of the holes that have been an issue. Now, I think they took steps forward in the Washington game in the first two periods and in periods one and three against the Oilers. But, again, two periods out of three, you're not going to win enough games when you're playing against teams that are going to be coming out of the West. So uh, it's just an interesting time for the Jets. This is definitely show us what you're made of territory. And we'll see how this 10-game block goes, right? I mean, I, I understand that there's definitely reason for concern, but the Jets can change a lot of the narrative over the last 10 games if they play the way that they want to. But you can't just assume they're going to do it either. They need to show you now. Well, absolutely. And I mean, uh, you know, like, listen, I love the the Lowry lines game. I mean, I like the fourth line. I mean, yeah. I, listen, I thought Cole Perfetti played well. Um, had the, had some opportunities that maybe he wasn't getting in previous weeks and and, and games in. I get why they're making the change because I actually thought Gustafson was really good. And that that 200-foot game two-way play is going to be very, very important come playoff time for the fourth line. Um, to me, I mean, when we get to this rink tonight, I mean, I'm looking at the top guys. I mean, you, there's not a single team in the NHL that can get carried through the playoffs by their bottom six. And if Winnipeg is going to be ready to compete with Dallas or Colorado or whoever they play in the first round. Um, you know, it's going to need those players in that top six to get back up to a level, not just offensively, but also in their own end. So they can, uh, they can compete with whatever beast of a team is their round one matchup. 
For sure. And Hassan, again, I'm not just trying to be defensive here about Kyle Connor, but earlier in the game, Kyle did have a couple of tenacious back checks, so which kind of shines the spotlight on the on the game winner even more. But it's not like he's completely abandoned and that there's no effort, but it just hasn't the Jets' effort hasn't been at a high enough level consistently enough. And right when you set the standard, um, the way that they played in December, it just they haven't been at that standard as often. Now, we know it gets harder as the season wears on and teams are trying to peak and everything else, but, I mean, Vegas is going through the same kind of thing, right? So they lost 7 of 9 recently, but now they're playing Golden Knights hockey. But even in saying that, I mean, Jack Eichel's their best player, but he had an off night the other night against Nashville from, from what I've been able to gather. So, I mean, star players aren't dominating every single shift every night, but this is the time of year when those guys have to be driving the bus. And when they're driving the bus, they need to be making sure that they're checking all of the other boxes in those categories. So I would also say Sean Monahan, he was moving much better the other night, Huss. Like to me, that was Monahan back the way he was playing when he first came to Winnipeg. So that was a huge development for the Jets. But these are the kind of games that Sean Monahan was acquired for, to be that number two high-end 1B center. And Vegas has the best, you know, probably four of the best, if not the best, center groups in the NHL. So those guys, Mark Scheifele's going to have to be great. Sean Monahan's going to have to be great. Well, Adam Lowry's going to have to throw a blanket over Eichel the same the way that they did against McDavid in limiting him to just the one shot on net. But that one shot on net ended up being a goal, right? So, um, And then Nicholas was the fourth. So now if you're David Gustafson and you want Rick Bonus, like you know Gabriel Velarde's right around the corner, like your best chance to stake your claim and show why you, you know, should be under consideration for game one would be to have a great game against that other fourth line. Because we know the Vegas' fourth line is one of the best in hockey. It's their identity line. They leaned on them in the series with the Jets and in the other three rounds that they played last spring. So there's there's tons of tentacles and under underlying matchups and I mean again the Jets are facing a Vegas team, Huss. Yes, we know the Jets are missing Velarde. Vegas is missing their captain, and they're missing Alex Petrangelo. So you have to play your best against your – and they're missing Aiden Hill, who is their clear-cut number one goaltender. So, I mean, the Jets need to show as much urgency as Vegas has been showing as they've been able to ramp up their game after their own tough patch. Ken Weave of the Winnipeg Free Press with us as we get ready to drop the puck tonight, 7 p.m. against the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, Ken, stepping away from the here and now and tonight's game for a minute, um, I wanted to ask you about Rucker McGrory. They, uh, they are in the tournament for the Frozen Four to get to the Frozen Four. They play UND in their first game. Yeah. If they win that, they likely play Michigan State. Uh, wondering if you've heard anything more on the Rutgers situation and uh, where you're at right now today as we get towards the end of March on the likelihood of him joining the organization before the end of the year. Yeah, Huss, I have no inside information there. I understand that what Scott Wheeler had said on a recent podcast, that, that he had had some sources telling him that Rutgers was considering going back. I mean, to me, I'm not disputing Scott's report. He's a very plugged-in guy on the amateur side of things. Uh, but to me, that sounds like, uh, you know, potential of an advisor maybe trying to raise the price of signing uh, Rutger McGrady. Now, that's, again, I have nothing to base that on other than... Or people around the Michigan films. Wolverines hoping like hell that he's going to be back for another year. I'm just here to tell you, Huss. I mean, most yeah. of the really good players in Michigan, those guys are aging out or graduating to the pro game. It, that, that would, it's not like it when Dylan Sandberg went back after winning two championships and they wanted to win a third. So, uh, you know, would there be some appeal for Rutger to go back and be the captain? Sure, but it also means you're delaying. Or is, that, is that worth delaying turning pro for? I just don't see it. I mean, there are things that Rutger needs to work on before becoming a, you know, a dominant NHLer. Does he think he can do that by going to school? Maybe. I don't see Rutger getting pushed by going back for a junior season at Michigan. And that's my personal belief. Um, more, many players of his age and caliber, you know, some have gone back. But the majority of people in that scenario want to turn pro. They want to get their signing bonus. They want to start making money. 
and they want to start the process of turning pro. So until I see otherwise, my expectation is the Jets will do everything in their power to sign Rutger McGroarty. But as I've been saying here before, I don't think that translates into Rutger McGroarty necessarily being in game one of the playoff lineup. Now, if he signs once their team gets knocked out, do I expect him to get games in the last eight to ten? Or, you know, it'll be down to seven or six? Yes, I do. Because part of that would be trying to burn the first year. So what that means, big picture, I don't know. I'll be surprised. Let's just put it this way. I'll be surprised if Rutger McGroarty is playing for Michigan in October. But now, is it possible? Of course it is. I'm not in Rutger McGroarty's inner circle. I have not had anyone tell me that he's signing, but I have also not had anybody tell me that he's going back to school for sure either. And, you know, sometimes even when you think you're doing one thing, you end up doing the opposite, Huss. And I'll use Mason example as a great example. Mason Appleton was named captain of the Michigan State Spartans and ready to go back for his third year. Um, but then he came to development camp and signed a few weeks later. So, I mean, do I expect the Rutgers majority decision to delay until the development camp? No. But, I mean, it obviously could. I just don't expect it to. So, I'm sorry, that's a lot of uh, long-winded way of saying that my opinion hasn't changed. And until that scenario changes, I'll be happy to say I'm wrong if I'm wrong. But that's not my expectation. And I don't, and again, the next logical question would be, well, is he going back because he wants to trigger becoming a free agent after the junior year? Well, again, I've had no one tell me that, and I've had no reason to believe that. And based on the love-in that we saw last July, you know, and the bromance with Colby Barlow and Rector McGroarty, you know, regaining the trust in the fan base, I just don't see it, Huss. I just don't see Rector McGroarty sitting at home saying, you know, I'm going to force my way out of Winnipeg. I just... I don't see that. I'm not trying to be naive, but I just, there have been no signs to suggest that is the case. So until we see otherwise, my expectation is that he would sign and, you know, gets his game with the Jets. Does that mean maybe there's time to get some games in with the Moose? That will depend on how the next couple, uh, couple days of the tournament go. Yeah, well, exactly. And just to your point, I mean, about anything like, you know, going back again, I mean, to... To, to stay in school for four years and to take away two professional years of earning NHL money, I think is, you know, you, there'd have to be a real issue there. And there certainly has been absolutely no indication of anything like that. And, um, you know, yeah. the regionals, the regionals are from the 28th to the 31st of March. So that is coming up, uh, well, coming up this weekend. And then the Frozen Four is April 11th and 13th. Uh, at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. So yep. we'll see what happens first and foremost coming up over the course of the Easter weekend. And then, who knows, this could be a big topic we'll be talking about next week on uh, on WST. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, but the thing is, Hus, even if he signs, who who is he knocking out of the playoff lineup if Filardi's there? I mean, is he knocking oh, Barron out of the I'm not even at that point. I'm not even at that point talking about the playoffs yet. I mean, let's... Let, let, sure. you know, get get in get in a few games and see how he looks. Um, I mean, listen, I think at that point it's really up to him to go in and show. I mean, if he all of a sudden comes in, uh, you know, like a uh, you know like a house on fire and is a difference maker, and the coaches look at this guy and go, "How the hell do we keep him out of the lineup?" Then, then they've got a tough decision to make. It will be on the player to make that tough decision when he comes in, and that's a lot to ask of a young guy that's never played in the NHL before. However, um, I, I think everything's on the table, but just big picture for the Jets. He's such an important asset moving forward. He's a player, I think, that, you know, has, you know, the potential of being a guy that, you know, could be a difference maker early on in his career. And we've seen guys before that. And, hey, let's let's not ignore the fact that it'll be great when Gabriel Velarde comes back and this team will be officially fully healthy, knock on wood, that nothing happens over the course of this weekend but as we all know, that can change very, very quickly. And, uh, you know, we'll find out a lot about his readiness for NHL hockey and that level when he eventually gets here and plays in a few games. And 
if that's something that we're talking about heading into the playoffs, that's a good thing for the Jets because they'll have him signed. And um, you know what? Maybe he'll have played well enough to make people think that he could be a guy that could help more than the guys in the, in the lineup right now. Ken, I know you got to run. Uh, just quickly, one word answer right now. Um, if you had to predict the Jets' first round opponent right now in the playoffs, uh, I think we had this conversation before. It was looking like Dallas. Dallas actually is in first. Are you still there with the most likely a trip to Dallas, or um, are we thinking that really anything is possible considering where Nashville is and what else is happening around the West? Yeah, it's super interesting, and there's there's an impossible for me to give a one word answer that I would be comfortable attaching a receipt to um, based on because all it's not just the Jets playing Na- or Nashville, Colorado, and Dallas in the last ten here. Uh, Dallas and Colorado are playing one another, and I think both of them are playing yeah. Nashville. Um, yeah. So uh, and no, and I'm also not at the place where I'm here to say uh, the Jets' most likely opponent is Vancouver. I mean. A lot of things would have to unravel uh, pretty heavily for that to happen. And is it a possibility? Sure. But it wouldn't be, I, I'm not at that point yet. And I probably wouldn't be at that point until after the next road trip. Uh, but I mean, again, it's going to be a tough matchup no matter what. And I mean, again, we can't ignore the fact that if the Jets lose to Vegas tonight, Nashville's playing Arizona. So that would leave them two behind with the head to head to go. So. Uh, I expect the Jets to be ready and their urgency level to be high. And, and just to clarify, I'm not down on Rutger McGroarty. I, I love the, all the th- things that he brings as a player, but we're basically asking him to jump over one of four players who are in double digits and goals in the NHL this season. And one of those players has 15 goals this year. So that's the only reason why I'm trying to temper the expectation of the immediate impact I think Rutgers is going to be an excellent player and might even find himself in the Calder discussion next year. But that doesn't mean he's going to come in and be and score 10 goals in the playoffs this spring. So anyways, long winded way of saying this is the best time of the year. Huss happy opening day. Always a treat to be with you. Enjoy the long weekend. And thanks to the commenters and everyone watching. We'll see you at the rink, buddy. Thanks for doing this. There Have a great is. day, my man. Cheers. You, you too. There's Ken Weeb of the uh, Winnipeg Free Press. All right, we are far from done. Um, we are going to catch up with Gary Lawless in just a moment. Um, first, a quick thanks to a couple sponsors, Gary, and uh, we'll come back and let you know when we will open up registration for Marbles. Keep your eye on the chat. Uh, Gary Lawless coming up next on WST. Well, spring is just about here, gang, and our friends at Consolidated Supply are ready for a very busy spring and summer. And the ch- and as we get ready for the playoffs and the playoff excitement increases, do not forget, Winnipeg Jet fans, that you can get priority access and count yourself in for the entire 2024 playoffs right now by putting down a deposit on season tickets or ticket packages for the upcoming 2024-2025 season. Head on over to winnipegjets.com slash deposit. A full list of the benefits of being a season ticket member or ticket package holder for the upcoming seasons there. Map and pricing and more. And if you do it now, you will be in the same seat for all of the whiteouts down at Canada Life Centre. Hopefully for a long and very fun playoff, uh, playoff run for the Winnipeg Jets. Again, right now, the We're All In campaign continues. It's winnipegjets.com slash deposit for more on that. And while speaking of the playoffs, probably a trip down to Royal Sports is going to be necessary as everyone gets their whites ready for the Winnipeg Jets and whoever they're playing come April. There is simply no better sports store anywhere than Royal Sports. And if you're a Winnipeg Jet fan, thousands of pieces of Jets merchandise, whites and otherwise all of the jerseys and still plenty of time to get your jersey customized with your favorite player name number just in time for the postseason so much more than just jets merch as well though at royal tons of bomber gear major league baseball with jays starting up right now nfl and more the biggest hockey section in town all of the spring sports loading in by the day and tons of cool stuff on the king skate snow and surf side Pop by and see it for yourself. Royal Sports, 750 Pemina Highway. 
And make sure to give them a follow on Instagram at Royal Sports Pamina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. And speaking of those playoffs, I mean, if you're not in the building or the team is on the road, you know the best place to get together with your gang to watch the big game is your local Boston pizza. All the Jets games on the big screen with big sound, not to mention those ice-cold schooners, world-famous BP wings, gourmet pizzas, and some great new treats on the BP appetizer menu. There's simply nothing like getting together at your local BP. And if you are staying at home, though, you can get the great taste of Boston pizza by ordering online at bostonpizza.com. You train day in and day out, learning new techniques, approaching new concepts, and living out the thrill of achieving your goals. Building a craft beer is no different. While you spend your hours on the ice, we spend ours here, brewing our trademark beer. Again, again, and again. Here's to pushing the status quo and challenging ourselves to build something memorable. 1919 by Little Brown Jug. Yes, indeed. Long weekend here. No show tomorrow, uh, but... Tonight is a great night to enjoy a few generic lagers or 1919s, uh, a staple in Manitoba, available at all Winnipeg sporting events. And listen, whether you're tailgating or cheering from the stands, the game's always better with a 1919 or generic in your hands. Cheers to the weekend. Cheers to our friends at Little Brown Jug. And by the way, check out their Instagram. Remus, they've got a Mario Kart uh, <laughs> event coming up with a live band. I believe that's on April the 14th. So check out the uh, the Little Brown Jug uh, uh, um, Instagram page uh, for that, for details. We may have to check that out. Um, all right. We're going to hook up with Gary right away, but Marbles is open. Um, we are, And we're going to need to kind of get to it quite quickly today because we don't have – it's not a normal Friday. We've got a game tonight. People need the podcast. So – We'll be going to it quickly. So you've got during the Gary Lawless interview to e enter exclamation mark marbles. You know where it is. Remus apparently has a wild track ready to kick off this long weekend. We'll do that coming up. We will get to the cool bet lines, tee up the Jays as well today against the Rays. But right now, as I mentioned off the top of the show, we headed down to the rink this morning, checked out the morning skate, heard from Bones but most importantly, hooked up with the lawman to talk about tonight and uh, the Vegas Golden Knights and where they're at heading into this evening in the upcoming playoffs. All right, Golden Knights in town, and we cannot have uh, Vegas come to town without a visit from our old pal Gary Lawless. Lawman, what's up? How are you? I'm good, Ossie. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm looking forward to this game tonight. Uh, certainly a big one for both teams, sort of in, uh, well, I would say similar situations. I mean, looking to ramp it up in time for the playoffs, both expecting to be part of the playoff dance, but... Uh, Fill us in on the last sort of, I mean, we'll talk big picture about Vegas and where they're at right now in a minute, but as of late, I, mean, I watched that game on Monday against the, the Blues, playoff feel to that one. Um, obviously, you guys got bit by Nashville. They've been doing it to everyone lately in that comeback win, but uh, where are the Knights coming into tonight and uh, sort of what is their focus right now getting ready to defend their crown? Yeah, they're 6-2-1 in their last night, and uh, Bruce Cassidy has been talking a lot about getting back to the defensive structure that they have played with. It's a weird time. So they played the other night against, uh, they beat St. Louis, uh, but in Nashville, they were missing you know, Mark Stone, and he's not going to come back until, well, who knows if he'll even come back. He's, yeah. No one really knows what's happening there. Hurdle hasn't played for them yet. So you're missing two top forwards. Alex Petrangelo is is ill. He hasn't played in a while. So you're missing your number one D. And Aiden Hill, their top goalie, is not around. And William Carrier, who he really changes the team. I, I'm trying to think of who I would compare to with the Jets, but maybe kind of Adam Lowry in the sense that you His take role. you take him out and you know you're missing a lot of that punch and that that weight that you have in your lineup. So. Uh, they were missing a lot, and were up 4-1. And, you know, it was a disaster that they lost. They gave up, you know, three in the third, and then and then one quick one in overtime. You don't like to see that happen. But they still picked up a point. So, you know, they have points in, uh, in, in seven of their last nine. That's a pretty good stretch. They, had a, they played a number of games where they held the opponent 
to 21 shots or less. They had 12 consecutive periods where the opponent had 10 shots or less. That ended against the Blues, and uh, they were good the first two periods against Nashville, and that Nashville had a lot of opportunity in the third period. So the whole thing for them right now is trying to get to, they're trying to limit what the opposition gets and do it consistently. And I wouldn't say they're all the way dialed in because there have been some slips, but they're getting close to that, and that'll be, That'll be the modus operandi tonight against the explosive Jets. They they just won't want to give the Jets top six any opportunity. Well, I mean, listen, from a Jets perspective, it's a great test tonight. I mean, they sort of bought it last week with two of their worst performances of the season. Um, you know, certainly played better, although they didn't get a result against Washington. And, and I would say it was sort of a glass half empty, half full performance against Edmonton. A really good start, which you were looking for, and a pretty gutsy comeback when the game looked like it had been lost. But overall, a 60-minute performance like that, it, it's not going to be good enough come playoff time. And I think for all teams right now, especially ones that have been comfortably in playoff positions all year long, as you well know, I mean, it's about getting ready for game number 83 and uh, really locking down that spot. Um, it's going to be difficult to do that for Vegas, considering the uh, you know some of the key players that are out of the lineup. And, you mentioned Mark Stone. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that'll talk, oh, here, it's happening again. I mean, this is a serious injury, and I'm sure they would love to be able to consider Mark Stone as a possibility at some point in the playoffs. Yeah, anyone who, if you watched the Vegas Golden Knights last year in the playoffs and saw what an impact Mark Stone had emotionally, and you know, the guy only had a hat trick in the clinching game of the Stanley Cup final. Like he, I'll He's tell not you, the guy you want to shut down. I'll tell you a little story. We were in Florida, and we're up 3-1 on the Panthers, and we're checking out of the hotel in Fort Lauderdale to fly back to Vegas. And we're walking through the lobby, and a very nice gentleman who worked at the hotel walks up to Mark and says, I and Stone was with a couple teammates, I hope you enjoyed your stay. We love having you here. And Mark said, thanks. And then the guy said, we'll see you in a few days intimating that Florida was going to win yeah. game five in, in Vegas and the Golden Knights would be back. We walked away and headed towards the bus and Mark waited until he was out of earshot from this lovely gentleman and then said, no beeping chance to his teammates. And I, and I right then and there, I knew the Vegas Golden Knights were going to win the Stanley Cup. He is different than anybody else on the team and you take him out and you miss him, uh, uh, you know, I don't know who I would compare. Again, I'll use Adam Lowry. You take Lowry out of the Jets for a lengthy period of time and they lose. Well, he's their captain for one. And you lose. Mark's a better offensive player than Adam. Adam's a more physical player than Mark. There's, there's, there, there is a good comparison there. So <clears throat> to suggest that the Golden Knights would prefer to uh, have Mark Stone out of the lineup, they don't have a playoff spot clinched yet. <laughs> It is well, and that's is beyond the, preposterous. Not to mention, like let's let just I, I just I, I I watch Twitter. I see some of the 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 people that follow on X that follow X that now. follow North End Rick. Yeah. And <laughs> North End Rick is not a conspiracy theorist. I give, but some of his followers are. <laughs> like he's had two back surgeries. Two back surgeries. You've had surgery. You know, well, you know how awful it is. Well, and what this? And is. now he's got a lacerated spleen. Yes. Look up. Vegas is faking it. Look that up. I mean, I, I've been looking into it. I mean, that's a three to six month recovery. I mean, you know, as I say, it, it would be Vegas is going to need to play well. They're going to need to win some games. Yeah. They're going to need to hold it down while their captain's out if they want to have him back. Uh, uh, let's talk about a hurdle for a minute. Yeah. And I mean, listen, uh, and we know Kelly McCrimmon is not <laughs> shy of taking a big swing. This team has been all in. They're the defending Stanley Cup champions. Um, Take us through trade deadline day. I mean, it was right down to the final moments. We got the word of this deal. And, you know, people can debate, you know, San Jose's role in it. But from Vegas' perspective, you get a guy that is not able to play just yet, but can be a real difference maker. And uh, it was sort of one that nobody saw coming. There's one every year, it seems. And this was Kelly's. Yeah, well, this, in the trade, it, it, he, Kelly approached San Jose way, like in January, I believe, about Hurdle. Like you guys are rebuilding, this guy doesn't really fit in. Can we can we figure something out? And uh, eventually they did figure something. And it was funny. 
So they got Mantha. They knew, you know, you knew they want what they kind of, you, know, you watch team every night, you figure, okay, they, they need some scoring on the wing. So they got Mantha, and I, you know, part of me thought, this might be it. You know, he went and got Barbashev, Bluger, and Quick the year before, and Barbashev was the big deal. Bluger was a, a, a tweak, some depth, and then Quick was, he, he was worried about the health of his goalies. Yeah. Brassois and Hill both were, and Thompson had all been banged up during the year. So he thought this will give me some insurance more for the stretch run than for the playoffs. For sure. And quick won games and was important for them. So when they got Mantha, I thought, huh, maybe this is maybe that's his big move. The guy had 20 goals and he's he's really hot right now. He's not scoring, but he's on a line with uh, William Carlson and Pavel Dorfiev, and he's really distributing the puck well. So, anyways, I thought this might be it. Then the Hannafin trade comes along. I, I had heard that they were interested in Hannafin, and I kind of thought that's a long-term play as much as it is a deadline play because if they trade for Noah Hannafin, they're going to want to extend him. And we'll see if, uh, if, 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 they, if, they are, if they do do that. that, that you know, that'll be an off-season thing. Um, but then I thought, okay, you know, he, he still has space. So that, and once you got Hannafin, I'm like... And by the way, the caveat in the Hannafin deal was quite interesting. It was yeah. a 2025 pick, unless we trade that before the end of yeah, the season. Yeah, so tomorrow. what he told Craig Conroy, he said, look, I've got this 24 pick in another deal. So I, it actually really was the reverse. Because he said, I've got this 24 pick in a... In a, in a sorry, I've got 25. the 25 pick. Yeah, they kept the 24 pick because the draft... Is in Post Vegas. Day. You gotta yeah, have you got to have a pick. Good for him. So the 25 pick is in another deal. If I don't use it, you can have it. But so really, Conroy had the 26 pick. Yeah. Unless, and, you know, Krim, of course, Kelly didn't tell him what that other deal was. And then I woke up the morning of draft day, uh, Thursday or Friday. I forget what day of the week it was. Friday, I think. And I got a text from uh, David Pagnota. Of the fourth period. Lawman, you guys are in on something huge. I'm like, well, what? He goes, I have no idea. No one knows, but everyone is chatting. And I got I you got. Know what? This reminds me, just quickly, because Dave was on with us heading into, into the deadline. And he kept on saying, San Jose's got something going on. And we're like, okay, yeah, they're in a couple. Like, Anthony Duclair was moving on. Um, that something going on was obviously Kelly McCrimmon on line one. Yeah, so anyways, uh, uh, Kelly gets the deal done. And again, that's a deal. No, they're going to have Hurdle now for six more years after this year at just north of six, six million. It's a great contract. It's like the old Mark Shifley contract. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, and Hurdle's a hell of a player. Oh, like, so I, they haven't seen, we haven't seen him play for, for Vegas yet. But against what, well, what Kelly said to Hurdle, when he, after they made the deal, he said to him, look, if you play for us like you did against us, everybody's going to be happy. <laughs> he's, been a, he's been a Golden Knights killer. Um, uh, is he skating? What's the... Uh, yeah, he's skating. That's uh, Bruce Cassidy uh, announced that uh, a little while ago. When he got here, you know, when he got to Vegas, uh, I, I, all, all they said was he'll play in the regular season. So... You know, he didn't come on this on this trip. Vegas plays in Winnipeg tonight, then goes to Minnesota next. So, uh, yeah, we'll see soon. I think. I, I mean, we'll, uh, you definitely want to get him into a few games and a little more comfortable and new yes. surroundings, new teammates before things get going. Well, I mean, it should be a good one tonight. Um, we'll uh, look forward to having some speaks in the playoffs. Uh, we, uh, I guess, Vegas very close right now. Last one for you though, quickly. I'm not done yet, so you uh, go ahead and do what you're going to well, do. Well, I mean, originally yeah. I thought we were on a tight time limit for some, Gary. He's got I have, awesome I have some business for you. <laughs> I'm looking at your apparel right now. <laughs> Listen, um, as far as the playoffs go, is it uh, does it matter where they finish and who they play? Um, it, I mean, they're still the team to beat. Very familiar with all of these teams. Nobody in the Western Conference should want to play the Edmonton Oilers in the first round. The referees call more penalties in the first round than they do in the second round. It's just, it's, that's it. And Edmonton's power play is not whatever it was last year. 
Still pretty good. It's still pretty good. They they, they can win. They, like they knocked the Kings out at five on four last year, and uh, and then Vegas got Edmonton in third round, second round. Yeah. yeah, 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 second round. And sure enough, you know Edmonton won a couple of games on their power play, and then you know as the, as the series went on, there was less less. Power play opportunity for Edmonton and Vegas was able to prevail. And I would think that any team in the Western Conference doesn't want to play the Oilers in the first round. That would be the only thing. That would be like, you know, listen, do you want to play Nashville in the first round? No. Not, not the way they're going right look now. Look around the West. I mean, it's as wide open yeah, as yeah. any good, yeah. legit you look teams at, as you'll see. You know, I mean, Winnipeg, you know, if Hellebuck, you know, is goes on a heater, they're yeah. scary. Although I will say uh, that you know, Vegas didn't have the money for him. Uh, I was so sad to see uh, Brassois leave leave Vegas. He was just uh, it was he has was been great in that, but he's just a he's one of the best dudes in the NHL. Listen, top he, shelf. I mean, the fact of the matter is that team is uh, tied right now for the Jennings Trophy going into t- the, the tonight's game, and it would be uh, if they're able to get it. I mean, Lauren Brassois, a huge part of it. He has had just an absolutely phenomenal season. And uh, wherever he ends up next year, hopefully there's a legitimate opportunity for him to start a nice, healthy race because he certainly has uh, he certainly has deserved it. Are, are these glasses taped together on the side? <laughs> it's hard Ladies to and tell. gentlemen, it's been great to it's have you out with Gary Lawless. Because they're so Vegas awful. <laughs> They're not taped together. They look like there's something They're, going on. They've got glue there on the side or something. Remus, not who touched. sells the sponsorships they've, they've, for this program? <laughs> like, everybody's walking around with merch, and you can't get a new pair of glasses? I, I, I like these glasses. And, and They're who's functional. The guy, who's the guy that just said hi to me? <laughs> Connor. Who's Connor? Uh, Connor Rabchak. Yeah, who's he? He's our new addition. Yes. Uh, talented guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's got a sport. Hard. He's like this kid's barely out of the womb. He's got a, a Winnipeg Sports Talk hoodie on. I got nothing. Hey, he's staff. He's staff. I'll hook you up with a You haven't paid Winnipeg me for Sports one of my hoodie. appearances. <laughs> Randy Carlisle would be demanding a new TV by now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the diva behavior that you expect when the two of us get together. Diva and it's behavior. not from yours truly. Great seeing you, man. Good luck tonight. And, uh, well, good luck in Minnesota and uh, and beyond. It's an outrage. We'll see if we'll talk about the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> fun stuff, the law, man. Good to see him today. And uh, Jets, please, please, for me, for all of us, can we send Gary out of that rink tonight with a frown and a one-game losing streak? Or I guess it would be two because they just lost to, uh, to Nashville. Um, all right. Last call for marbles, everybody. If you just popped in, it is Thursday, but it's a long weekend. We know you'll all freak out if we don't get a marble race this week. So uh, last call right now. (laughs) We'll give you another 30 seconds or so if you just popped in. And uh, we will get to uh, the uh, the cool bet lines. Remo, just while uh, we wait, you you're, why are you in such a good mood today? You seem okay. to be uh, really good mood. Has I wanted to tell you to start the show, but I my cameras are working, and I forgot. So guess what I just got yesterday? I posted it on my Instagram story, and I got so much response. Everyone's like, "How did you get that? That's so hot!" Check this out. Huh? Dropped off to me. By the city of Winnipeg, a new recycling bin. Hell yeah. Look how shiny that thing is. <laughs> uh, so you're not a homeowner. You won't understand. But m- <laughs> my, mine, was, mine was cracked. And I got yelled at by the guy who picks it up and puts it in the truck. He yelled at me. He's like, you can't have uh, a cracked garbage uh, recycling. You have to call. So I called the city and they got me and they gave me a new one. So fired up for this brand new recycle bin. Thank you, City yeah. of Winnipeg. What a moment. What a moment. You know what? Kids, houses, lawn work, and now a new a new recycling bin. This is uh oh, you know what? I can't say I blame you. This is uh, this is just a you know what? There's gr- there's good days and then there's great days. And apparently that was a great day. Yeah, people <laughs> People call, like people message like the messages I got on my Instagram. People are like, "How did you get that?" And like, 
Uh, Chris Vermette, what a flex. Cruiser, that's shiny. Winnipeg, Gabriel Vivaldi. There's a real struggle. It took like three, I had to wait three weeks for that. It's your boy, Bruce. I got one recently too. Great feeling. Yin Vivian, beautiful. <laughs> I'll be honest. I did not know. I did not know yeah. the popularity of the recycling bin these days. But uh, well, there you go, Remus. Mm -hmm. You know, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. you know, the Jets have to win tonight. You know, there's just good vibes everywhere. Starting off with the city dropping off a new recycling bin to my pal Michael Remus. All right. Uh, okay. So that's it for Marbles registration. You can grab that list. You you, may, you should probably put Remus recycle bin in the in the marble race today. Oh, I was so fired up, man. It was, it's so shiny. As people said, you could eat off of that thing. It's gonna get really gross soon, but I'm enjoying it now. <laughs> um, while you uh, w while we get ready for marbles, we can get uh, you can get your last call in for MLB futures at coolbet.com. We're going to pull them up right now. I have, I, have, I have put my wager in on the Jays. I'm buying low on the Jays. A lot of people are down on them, including the bookies. Their win total is only 86 and a half. Count me in for 87 or more wins for the Toronto Blue Jays. You can still get that in the MLB futures section. We do have opening day games to get to right now. I believe Mike Trout's already hit a homer. The story of Mike Trout's life. Hits a homer. Orioles up 4-1 on the <laughs> Angels right now. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how it works, folks. Um, a ton of games today, but uh, the Jays are going at it with, um, with the Rays. Jays plus 127 underdogs. Rays minus 143. And by the way, if the CoolBet's doing a promo for some merch, you can check out their feed, their uh, post at CoolBet Canada. But if you want to go in and throw a $10 bet on a J to hit a homer, uh, if whoever's the first homer of the season for the Jays, uh, they're going to send out a CoolBet prize package. And uh, as Dusty and I were talking about the CoolBet hoodie, the most comfortable hoodie that we have had uh, basically worn the thing out, got a new shipment coming in, but uh, take care of a cool better for that. Anyways, check their post and uh, you've got about 15 minutes before the 310 first pitch to get that in $10 on a J to hit a home run. I went with Bo. I actually put 20 on Bo plus 750. Be a hell of a way to start off the uh, start off the season. Uh, not a full slate of games, but most major league teams in uh, action today. Lots of three o'clock games. Uh, and then a few games tonight, Cubs and the world champion Rangers going at it, Cleveland and Oakland, Colorado, Arizona later on tonight. Uh, massive night in the National Hockey League. Um, we won't go through all of these games, but uh, some real feature games tonight. Obviously, the game that we're most interested in is the Jets and Golden Knights, and the Jets are favored. Minus 119 home faves, Vegas Golden Knights plus 102. How about this for a matchup? The New York Rangers and the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche had a little slip up at home against the Habs earlier this week. Kind of think that they'll be jumping at the chance to get back at it and a great team to do it against and one of the top teams in the league in the New York Rangers. Uh, Colorado's minus 158. The Rangers are plus 134. Kings and Oilers added in Edmonton. This one's moved a little bit towards Edmonton. Uh, Oilers minus 162 home faves. Kings plus 137. The Preds looking to make it 17-0-2 in their last 19. They're in Arizona. Our resident sharp in the lock shop, Rod Z, is on the Coyotes' money line tonight, saying the streak stops this evening. Arizona plus 143. <clears throat> Dallas and Vancouver later on tonight. That'll be a good one. Dallas is actually a slight road favorite. I do like Dallas tonight against Vancouver. Dallas minus 113. And the Vancouver Canucks, 104. Um, all the games there lit, lit, ready for you. Caps needing a win. They're in Toronto taking on the Leafs. Plus 143 for Washington, minus 169 for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Men's Worlds, I just see, is open. That's getting going very shortly. Where's Brad Gushu? Gushu, plus 265 to win. Scotland, plus 240. Italy and Switzerland plus 380. Man, very, very wide open. Maybe you have to throw a little sprinkle down on Gushu to uh, to get it done 
He has been, uh, man, he looked great at the Briar after that rough start. Uh, and, of course, March Madness. And uh, they're all the games going uh, tonight and tomorrow. If you haven't made a bet already, 20% uh, multiplier for every round for one wager. So if there's a game you really like, bet it at Cool Bet. You'll get a 20% multiplier. Uh, very busy. Very busy right now. We hated... Well, I'll get to the Houston Open in just one second. But if you haven't already um, played a cool bet, use the promo code WST when you make your first deposit. You get a 100% bonus up to 200 bucks over at uh, at cool bet. And I should mention, I mean, we're officially back working with Breezy Bend on Monday with it being April 1st. But uh, let's get a quick update for you from... The Shell, or it's no longer the Shell. It's just the Houston Open. Um, and uh, I can tell you that our picks, well, not particularly great. Um, we had we had Will Zalatoris. He was going to be our guy this week. Scotty Scheffler was a 3-1 to one favorite. You knew that he would be right up there. But Willie Z disappointed us big time, plus four. Through the round, he shot 74, but uh, there is Scotty Scheffler at minus five. And the newest member of the Cool Bet team, Canadian Adam Svensson, two shots back at four under par, 66. It would be great to see that Cool Bet logo in one of the final groups on Sunday. Of course, all our golf reports brought to you by our friends at Breezy Bend Golf and Country Club. Cannot wait to get to Breezy, home of the champions this year get back onto the golf course. Great place for weddings too. Find out more on everything Breezy's got going on online at breezybend.ca All right, Remus, we uh, it's 3 o'clock. Let's bang out this marble race and get the long weekend officially started. We cannot do marbles, even if it's on a special Thursday edition, without a little Tristan Rivers music. Let's hit a theme song. It's Friday Another Work's gone by. You deserve to treat yourself. Maybe a nice cream truck or a bottle of beer. Fall the whole day in, so that's you can't deny. Why use that for even for pleasure? Your blind luck could try. It's time to do a marvel. Truck. <laughs> the truck at the end. <laughs> Tristan Rivers music. What an absolute beauty. All right, Remus, tell us about this course we've got today. Uh, it's called, I gotta find it. I think it's called Bubbly Fortuitous Evening Night. One of the two. I tested it out. It was wild. It was pretty cool. It had bubbly in it and night. And it just got me thinking of the biggest bar night of the year. That's t- that's go. tonight, the that's Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. The Thursday before Good Friday. That's right. So good time yeah. for a Jets game. I'm expecting a big rowdy crowd. Huh? Well, there will be some CC enjoyed around town tonight, I'm sure. And uh, I know that uh, tr- we had the country version of the song and Tristan Rivers mixed in beer there at the end. Uh, yes, some generic and 1919s will be enjoyed at this game tonight. And hopefully by a very happy group of Jet fans leaving the building afterwards. Um, all right, how many marbles in? Oh, I'm just having trouble launching the game. Uh, two, okay, 200 and... <laughs> 200 and... and uh, 28. So I'm enjoying the chat. Waiter says he's going to TYC for Bad Thursday. Oh, uh, so I don't, is that TYC place still open? back in the day. Is that, that place still around? It... Well, I mean, it's still there. It's called yeah. the TYC Event Center. Oh, okay. God, Not- just thinking about that. You know what? I can think of this weekend back working <laughs> for the Moose. The game would finish. They took very good care of us. Um, and we'd roll in after the game. 
There'd be like seven or eight hundred people in that bar. Absolute mayhem. Oh my God, those were the days. Won't be hitting the club afterwards, but uh, hopefully having a few somewhere downtown afterwards in a good mood afterwards. Yeah, there was a lot of people that cut their teeth in the yacht club. That uh, that is for sure. Oh, someone's got a social tonight. Classic. Oh, right that, on. that's a good move. Social tonight. T Bone. By the way, shout out to T Bone and T Bone Junior. Son, his son is about to watch his first marble race on his own iPad. Say hi to Evan. Right on. Yeah, we're getting the. We're getting the youngsters, so you youngsters get them in. into the marble race. This is how this is how we get them hooked into the WST family <laughs> right now. The Marble Club. I don't know if I ever got to the Marble Club. I did hear about it though. The Rory Street Marble Club. Eh? Maybe that turned into Wise Guys. I'm not sure. If we go to if we turn into WBT Winnipeg oh. Bar Talk, this could take this. The podcast will never get up. So I, I just let's remember focus on the marble race. I used to listen to, um, I think, Flava 1079, and they would be on location at a bar, and the guy would be like, oh, bar, 65 Rory Street, like over and over shouting, shouting. I think, was that alive later, though? Oh, no, oh, bar. I think that was Fat Daddy's. Okay. okay. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, we could, we could do, we could do a full separate show on just bar history of the, uh, of the city of Winnipeg. Um, all right, let's do this. We I'll got be two, at 329 tonight. I'm not 231. sure. 231. 231 in. All right. 231. I put you in in all caps, by the way. You okay, thank in. you. Yeah, I'm, that's my standard. I'm going in. The Osborne Zoo tonight. RIP the zoo, Elliot. Man, some good times at the zoo. I that was definitely one of the places I spent the most time at, living in the village all those years. I drove by there. Half price food at Dutch Made, and then going across to uh, the zoo for a, a long shift on nights like this. It's coming up. Moose Three says, "Feeling old at the moment." I'm like, hey, we all just got really excited about my new uh, recycle bin. So it says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Sign okay. of the times, gang. Sign of the times. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just hit? Should all I right, hit we're go? ready to go. Oh no! It's I didn't do the right. I didn't do it correctly. Sorry. Yeah, hold I on, figured it didn't seem we something. But all the names weren't in there. The names weren't in there. I got you. I got you. I got excited. You know, and as we get into the bar talk and brings people out, it's well, it fun certainly time. does. Yes, Yin Vivian, right? The Marble Club was very popular with visiting NHL teams. True. I I will never forget, and I could tell stories about the Chicago Wolves. From back the AHL days, the Chicago Wolves act when they would roll into the Tijuana Yacht Club, often after beating the Moose, was was legendary. And at one point, some of their players, like Malte Featherstone, they weren't in the lineup. Normally, players would be in the press box, not the Wolves. They'd go right down to the club lounge behind the net, and they would crush drinks the entire game and beak their teammates from behind the glass. It was... It was only in the minors, only in the minors. Um, all right, we've got all the marbles in. Everyone, good luck to you all. I'll have a great Easter long weekend. Tonight, we focus on the Jets in Vegas, but not before we drop the marbles one day early for a long weekend on WST. Here we go. It is the bubbly, fortuitous night track. This is another brand new one. We've never seen this before. I like the big, that's like the combination of the Plinko, a Plinko start along with, um, looks like, like a bubble hockey rink, if you will. All right. Who's there? Who's that first? Uh, Yoska De La Roca. D Sizzle with a nice start. Oh, this is a wild one. Somebody just got Dan Milburn over the top rope. Ray Ray, Rick Buck. Jano, not good. All right, Gary Labossier is in a nice spot. Sam Crow. Sam Crow's got a lot of good karma. Always has dropped in with some nice super chats and support for the fellas. Oh, look at Granny Bomber fan with the big move up front. This is a wild, wild track remiss. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Is there ever? All right, we've got a few more, a uh, few more eliminations, it looks like. They're just getting tossed all over the place. Yeah, are they ever? All right. Whoa, here we go into a massive funnel. Excellent architecture by whoever put together this track. I don't think anyone's gotten down yet. 
Oh, no, I, I spoke too soon. Drew, or Derek Schmidt. See you later. K9, all in the mix. Uh, Dave's heavy eyes. That's actually all caps Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> but he changed his name to uh, probably do some trolling or something on the illegal curve message board, and now he has to wait. But yes, all caps Kyle in his pseudonym is first place right now and has a bit of a lead here. I'm not sure if All Caps Kyle's ever won the marble race before, to be honest. He has. It'd be funny if he finally won after changing his name. As Dave's heavy eyes, exactly. He's going up. It's slowing down a little bit. Who's going to be the first one through? Okay, it is Dave's heavy eyes. He's Who's next? Todd Fermit. See you later. There's Colin Jensen in there. Gary Labossi. Colin Jensen? Yeah. What's up, Colin? Oh, Colin is right there. See you later and Colin Jensen. Wow, what a crazy track. Is okay. this it? This is it. So whoever comes out first of the end is the winner. That's the finish. Okay. Just come Here out of there. So it looks like see you later is on its way. See you later. Looking very good to dropping in. No, not yet. No. Oh, yep. We'll see. Yes, yeah, see you later. First place. What an amazing, what an amazing YouTube name to have to win the marble race too. He just said, see you later to the other 231 marbles in the race today. So uh, see you later. Well done. All right. We'll let this run through and see uh, where everyone, where everyone finished up. Uh, the power number two, all caps, Kyle, AKA Dave's heavy eyes. <laughs> Our buddy Colin Jensen, one of the best cameramen in the game, he finishes fourth. D. Malinuk at five. Garrett Soloway at seven. Or sorry, at six. XX Revolution, who's been in a number of races. Oh, I just got thrown over the top rope. I didn't make it. Damn it. Uh, Randall Anderson, eight. Jeff Bowes, nine. And B. Henderson. I was obviously very slow. I think I just got roasted by the fire at the uh, at the end but yeah see you later 219 very nicely done see you later send us an email winnipeg sports talk at gmail.com let us know what size of a hoodie you wear and uh, we'll fire you an email next week and you can come out and uh, pick it up at some point um just do a quick rundown ream and we'll see where everybody finished so people can see it i see there's Derek schmidt matt hyman Winnipeg Gabriel Vovilardi, Paul Carr in the top 30, Goldie Joy. There's Jet Oil Tom, Boba Jet. What's up, Boba? Ron P. Royal Sports. Shout out to Royal. Brant Batters, Dave Asplin, Doug Phil. There's Phyllis, Spency, all top 100 performances this week. Greg M. Cosmic Tales, Gary Lawless. 96th. <laughs> Nicely done, Gary. Oh, my recycling bin got 104. 104. Pretty good. Pretty good. SK and Greg Hasbeek. Pack might see you tonight. Should be a big one. NVHA ball hockey. There's Julian, Cole, Rob Rempel. Royal Sports Payable. I don't see. There's Amanda. Amanda got in right over, right before the end. Missing Monk, and then everybody else was eliminated. You know, I don't see Bozeman or Ross. They might have not known that it was uh, it's Marvel's possible. Thursday today, which is good for me because uh, I got thrown over the top rope, as you can see there. There. All right, Lucas Massiel, who uh, had a good time with us at that at game. So there's everyone else that got thrown over the top rope or burned by the fire or did not finish. Ardis, what's up? All right, there we go, gang. All right, so we did do a marble race, 310. We got to get out and get the pot up. Uh, up in the upper bowl tonight, if you're at the game, pop by the bar at 316. We'll be chilling, hoping for hoping to manifest a victory before and in between periods, I'm sure. Fan appreciation night on Saturday should be a great one. 50% off all food and non-alcoholic beverages at the game. Jerseys off the backs at the end for lucky fans as well. And uh, don't forget, sing Oh Canada with Stacey on Saturday night if you're going to the game. That is going to do it for us. 
Thanks to Ken Weeb, Gary Lawless, Brandon Rewicki, all of you for hanging out with us on a great but short week. Have a wonderful Easter weekend. And uh, let's get some wins for the Jets. Need one point to officially get over that damn over and cash those tickets as well. That would be a nice Easter gift as well as a big bag of mini eggs. Um, for Michael Remus, I'm Andrew Patterson. Thanks so much to all of our sponsors and all of you for making WST a part of your day. Enjoy the games this weekend. Have a good one. Join us Monday, April 1st. Kings in town. Another game day edition coming up after the weekend. We'll see you then. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down! Let's go home! Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.